Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. This is episode 59 of the Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon Crawl by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Necrotic Gnome. I am, as always, your referee and host, John. Normally we would have Mike playing Darius the Assassin, but he is dead to us this evening. But otherwise, going around the horn, we have... Uh, I'm David. I'm playing Mysa Phase, the first level magic user. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt. I play Avaricios, the left hand of Lysion, sixth level cleric, ready to loot. Hi, everyone. I'm Ted. I'm, tonight I will be playing the role of Mortis J. Gobliano, and I'd like to report that the courts exhort you all, in short, to support Mort. <laughs> 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 Should expect nothing less from you, Ted. All right. Oh my God! <laughs> I can see Ted with his little pencil and his little notebook. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, this is, this is a good one. Yeah, this I got is, it. I... Great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So uh, we Maybe are picking up right where we left off. They are back in the the uh, natural caverns of the Druids' retreat. Uh, once recently used by Garalad in order to find easy egress um, from Plunger Town out to the wilds, they are back in here because they are on a quest to get as much of that vault hoard as they possibly can. But there are uh, multiple other interests involved, including the most uh, uh, what's the word the uh, the most upfront, I guess, is the. Um, Wine Dark Cohort, uh, there is a small squad there, uh, you assume, it was at the Gladiator Gladiator School above with Estelle, possibly, and it looks like they may have made a, a, a deal with Crossfitness Rex, the Green Dragon. So they are attempting to get there before the main body of the Wine Dark Cohort does and get as much loot as they possibly can. So they're in the depths right now. You have snuck past the Cave Bear for the second time. You have... Uh, backtracked along Garalad's path using the phosphorescent mushrooms to find your way, and you have found yourself in one of the constructed basements that leads to a dwelling, you assume, somewhere up above, um, where Atticus had met his end uh, many moons ago. Uh, he was being munched on by some carcass crawlers and not wanting to risk uh, losing some men over it, uh, Mizophase used his fireball scroll and wasted them all. So that is where literally where we are. So there is the three there is the three of them, the PCs, 20 goblins led by none other than Gang Green. And there <laughs> is a fantastic artwork on the Discord server by one of our users by the way. Go, go check that out that uh, of Gang Green. Yeah, and like we that. have um and 19 other goblins and we also have our our um, retainers Yost and Lisbeth, right? So yes. from last session, the yeah. okay. we have um, a couple people that uh, had enough to level. So Darius has enough to level. Uh, Mizophase has enough to level to go up to Magic User 2. And I believe Elizabeth has enough. Did you say that, Matt, to go uh, up? Let me see. Uh, yes. Yes, she does. Okay, She cool. will be a level 3 or level 4 when she rests. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, you, you need to find a place to rest. Um, and so until that point those three characters are all um, in the wasting XP zone, which no one likes to be in. So, you need to rest. Um, okay, so Darius is no longer with us. He did have silence cast on him, but he's now in the NPC cloud, so that uh, silence is basically over. Um, he had also used one of his three invisibilities. Also not a issue right now. It is the 4th of Jelenios. It is the dead of night. It is 2.50 a.m., Cinderella time is 9 a.m. That's when the wind out cohort is scheduled to arrive. Um, and you have bug guts all over the place. Atticus guts too. Burnt and charred everywhere. Um, and there is that ruin of that staircase that used to go up uh, to the top there. With Question the chest. about that. Yeah. Um, if you would remind us. So we know about the staircase. Mm -hmm. um, the Presumably it went somewhere. Of originally, mm -hmm. and I cannot recall whether that opening is open or closed or blocked with rubble. It's or, blocked with rubble, you know. yeah. So the staircase goes up, but then it sort of ends like it was destroyed, right? And yeah. there, was a, there was a landing. Like, it looks like, it, like a, a switchback, right? But the landing is there, so that's kind of freestanding. That's where Atticus died originally with, with, the, uh, right. with the chest. And I guess uh, you guys had reminded me that you had never actually opened that chest. 
Um, no, we opened it. No, we, we opened did. it. We put food in the chest. Oh, that's we right. We just yeah. never looted it. Right, right. Um, and anyways, yeah, the, the ceiling where apparently there was probably some sort of egress out to the top um, has basically um, collapsed and it's rubble. It's not impossible to get through. Okay. So I have a quick question, John, about this about the rubble in this room as we're kind of looking around everything, you know, guts everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, the the pile of rubble over there, does this look like a good uh, potential place uh, uh, for us to hide some loot where we were yeah, to get it? Like, there's there plenty of rubble here. Yeah. Okay. Um, per David's talk on the discord earlier, um, this is this is definitely a place like it's like a crossroads, right? Like it's a constructed zone. It's a place where anyone who was traveling through would probably stop for a minute. Okay. Right. It is not yeah. like a, a like a pass through point. Right. So um, right. if anyone was looking for something, this would be a place where people would look. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. but it is a place where there's a lot of places to hide things. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of goods here. Um, uh, right. Man, there's those two block, those two folding screens. Right. Um, there's the uh, the whole structure of the staircase, like that wooden structure. Um, there's refuse all over the place. Don't forget that there are three Garalad signs: um, exit to the north, workshop to the east, and scary to the south. You would set up that screen in front of the southern one, um, and that is where there is a green glow a steady green glow coming from there where you used to hear when you first came by here there was a male voice shouting in anger there but that is completely silent now but the glow is still coming from there the very mysterious sort of supernatural glow coming from the south mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right so that's the deal what do you do um is and the the chest is still here right like it didn't get yes. blown up or destroyed or anything by the fireball nope guys should we take that with us as a as just more another place to like store stuff if we need it i mean we can dump it if we need to I'd but be it's a poison it's a poison trapped chest go ahead Ted. well uh, um we are still traveling at 120 due to our light encumbrance um i suppose if a couple of goblins were carrying a chest they could probably handle it but it, i don't know if it would drop their speed or not um i i would think that anyone carrying a wooden chest on their back would not move at top speed. And I think we need to stay at top speed I in agree. order to John, maximize our time. Yeah. Um, John, how much do we think it would slow down if we had two goblins pick up that chest? Let me see what's in it here. Uh, da -da. We could dump everything out and just steal the chest. Well, I was also going to ask what I couldn't recall what was in it. And it, I'd be curious to see if it is still in it or if it has been looted, which it tells us something about who's been in and out, in and out of here since we left mm -hmm. this. So based on what's in it, I'll give you a reminder in a second. But the, there's enough in there that I would say that it is not like a small little thing. Um, uh, I think a single goblin could carry it. What did I say that the goblins would have? Like a 11 strength? Is 11. That yeah. 11, yeah. So um, I would say it's a... Uh, well, what, what is a chest? Do I, do I have that listed on the thing? Uh, equipment where's anyone got that up i, can look it up right now. I don't have it no hold on hold on folks this is important i think it's a, a double slaughter but let me look mm -hmm. let's see Oof. gear oh i have it on a gear that's what it is this is exciting folks this is great um <laughs> looking up charts I got it. Chest. That's how you know it's Dungeons and Dragons. Wooden small <laughs> is two. Yeah, so two slot, two slot item. Okay. Hold so, it. <laughs> so that is yeah. is that enough to if that's in a pack to. Uh, so it's not a very big chest. Yeah. If we emptied it, it's two slots. We could keep moving. So if it's two slots, how much gold would it hold? Like two hundred gold, four hundred gold. Uh, that I don't know. Hmm. I have to look it up later. Okay. Well, if 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 we can bring it like it is with a couple of guys and not slow down, let's just do it. Then we have something. Fine. With I mean, uh, Garalad will know that his stash has been messed with. But okay, so you had, you said you had opened the chest before. We have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, out of so this is all part part? of the two slots. Um, just because it's like the it has been packed into like a, a container. Um, uh, it has a bedroll. Uh, three work, three weeks worth of iron rations, which is poison. That, that's pretty amazing. Uh, oh yeah, you poisoned that, didn't you? Yeah, which uh, might come in handy still. A uh, packet of mistletoe and holly, which is what kind of gave it away. Well, and a silver sickle, which is kind of what gave it away that this is probably Garalads. Um, uh, two blocks of incense, um, the uh, spare set of robes, 
and a pouch that had 200 silver pieces and two pieces of amber gem. Each one, each one of those worth 100 gold. So pretty slick. Nice little treasure treasure store there. <laughs> you know, the uh, three weeks of poisoned rations, that's how we get rid of the goblins after they've hidden the gold for us. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, one of many options <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, did I say that out loud? <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to do in this room, or where would you like to go? Uh, let's. We want to keep moving as quick as possible, right? Yeah. Let's. Uh, okay, if we so you're, you're that, not investigating hey, that green just, glow, correct? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. No way. <laughs> okay. All right. So not unless it's the green glow of uh, instantly getting to all the gold right away and getting back again safely. <laughs> Is it that? No, it could be. All right. Okay. So you're moving um, at 120. I said that you guys are going to be moving three squares uh, per turn, which is technically yeah. 150 feet. So uh, let's see here. Uh, Our river to your people, John. Yes. So don't mind me. Nothing at all funky going on here. <laughs> totally disregard. That sounds okay. exactly like what you said when the last time <laughs> monst wandering monsters showed up. <laughs> one, two, three. That's uh, one, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, don't mind me at all. Everything's fine. Okay, I have so us about at the Y intersection. Uh, after four Is turns, yeah. you guys are at that. Uh, yes, at no. I actually, um, after let me go over to Miro. Three. Sorry, after three turns, we're at the Y, right? Yeah, One, correct. And then two, um, three, yeah. Uh, okay. Then uh, after four turns, you're basically at the T intersection there. Okay. okay. So it's foot traffic to the north. Um, gotcha. Uh, you have not explored westward, um, but right. you decide not to. Correct. Yeah, I don't think now is the time. I mean, it'd be nice if there was a really great shortcut, but one, at this two, point, three, I don't one, think two. we'd save enough time. Okay, so after another two it. turns, you find yourself fully within that triangular room. Now, this is a natural cavern, not not a basement, just so you're aware. Yeah. Um, but there was a, a lot of foot traffic through here, right? Like, this looked to be mm -hmm. like a major crossroads for the caverns. Um, not a lot of foot traffic. It's not like the highway or anything like that, but uh, but it but seems comparatively. like most right. things that kind of move through here kind of end up going through here at some point, right? Um, okay, let me uh, switch over to there real quick. All right. Uh, yeah, so you had three signs, uh, uh, Gerlad signs here. So exit to the north, workshop to the southeast, and no to the southwest, all made to look like they were cardinal directions to confuse the unwary. Um, but not so gorned back in the day. So, uh, th there, it doesn't look like anything has been, it, it, you can't really tell if anything is different here. There's, there was never, it was pretty much a featureless room to begin with. Um, but it's, it's wide. It's a very large chamber. Don't forget these are 50 foot squares. So we're talking about like around a hundred foot, hundred feet per side of this triangle. Right. So large and echoing with stalactites dripping down uneven floors, stone, Right, basically clear of debris um, and uh, cramped tunnels heading out in all directions. So uh, you're just going to continue so, following your zone? Yeah, yeah so th there's there's one thing that I want to keep a, a lookout for. I remember the first time that we went through these caves, Avaricios was making chalk arrow marks on the, like on the ground and on the wall in places that pointed the opposite direction that we came from. So like if yeah. somebody were trying to follow our arrows, they'd go, the opposite way right. and i'm curious if those arrows still seem to be there i think this was about where i stopped kind of when we entered this triangular room so as uh, we go forward yeah yeah so you don't not you do not see that anyone's messed with that okay, okay. cool that's good news all right yeah, so i say we just keep going keep going no waste no wasting time okay no so you head um southwest then takes you about another turn to get to uh that bend or so uh, let's see. Not really. Uh, one, two, three. Actually, you go around the bend to the south. One, two, three. Um, after another three, so you're at the um, you're at the point where it go, takes a straight shot to the northwest after about two turns. Okay. okay. And John, then um, you know that you're getting close because there's the slope generally tends to go down, goes down for a long time without turning, and you kind of remember this when you were kind of trucking your way up when initially. Um, so. 
let's see. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Don't mind me. Do -de -do -de -do. So, John, so guys, get, I, get, I, I'm sorry, uh, going go like in this, like, I think going from this place forward in particular, we're going to start watching walls, ceilings, uh, you know, the floor, any place where there's any kind of irregularity mm -hmm. that we may be able to stash treasure one way or the other. Like, if, I, I know it's mostly uniform, but watching carefully to see if there are any crevasses, any okay, you know, cracks, so, breaks. So it's all natural, right? So there are plenty of irregular points along the entire passage, everywhere you've been, where you could potentially store something, right? Or tie something to, like like David's idea of of tying like a like a bare thing, you know, from the ceiling um, could be done at basically any point because there are stalactites, multiple stalactites, ledges, things like that. Right. Um, but they're, right. Um, but they vary in size. So it all depends on like how much you're able to get from the vault. If any, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, David. I agree with Matt. I would also say that like, well, the height of the ceilings is what that idea is predicated upon. So I, I want it to be like, if I were to do like a ceiling tie, I'd want it to do it like outside of a, the light, the, like the reach of most light, right? That's, that's right. that. And rather, right. rather than just like right. 15 feet, I thought it was where, where, where it'll cast a shadow. What I would also say though, because I agree, Matt, but I would also say um, as we're getting closer to, like anytime we get to a juncture, John, I want to be really cognizant of the presence of, as far as American memory can tell, disturbances in the, in the floor, whether they be footprints or mm -hmm. freshly kicked rocks. It's pretty obvious when dust has settled versus like yeah. freshly been pushed. Yeah, and if no, anyone has come from this direction, I want to be hyper aware. Of yeah, Matt's it. been pretty clear about that since he actually entered yeah. the caverns that you've been checking cool. out for that. So if I if there is a difference, I'll let you know. Ted, cool um, guys. When we get one turn out from the basement, I say we stop and like armor up, right? Like my guys are going fast because they're not wearing an armor right now. Okay, and so I you do not want to enter the wine dark area without armor on. You are at that point. So nothing disturbs your passage through all of this time. Okay. You go through a uh, you know a couple of hours of travel slowly through here, noting places where you could potentially hide things. There are it, it, none of it is perfect. Like none of it is like the like a hidey hole like in the middle of the wall or anything like that, right? right. Um, but you could definitely use a, a combination of cleverness and your tools in order to figure something out if you wanted to, right? Um, right. Uh, there is no place to bury anything. Right. That you've gone to. I'll, just, I'll say that much. And okay. in addition, um, none of the mushrooms seems to have been disturbed, and um, and you don't seem to see any passage here. Now, when you the moment that you leave the triangular chamber is when the mushrooms stop, right? Because the yes. mushrooms actually were going to continue to the southeast, not to the southwest, which is the direction that you went, right? So at that point, actually, um, I need to know. Uh, I should have actually in the beginning though. We'll just say like the mushrooms provided enough light to actually guide by, but I um I would okay. need to know light. Well, um Avrishos has his uh holy symbol with the permanent oh, light spell continue a light. Okay. on it. Right. So okay. he's um so yeah. he's good. And I think we would do that thing where the, the guys with infravision would go ahead, we'd stand by behind. Uh there's one more other little detail I just point out. Um uh Lisbeth as a as a druid has a third level feature. Um, which is uh, passing without trace. Mm -hmm. So uh, it says that a third level druid can pass through natural environments without leaving any tracks. So if we can have her at the back, she can kind of tidy up our trail a little bit. I mean, 20, one person not leaving tracks versus, you know, 25 people may be a little different, but maybe she could disguise it a little bit or mitigate it a little bit. So, so, the track. so that is basically her, like she, she can do her own. But you guys are still going to track through. Now so she can't. She can't mitigate the the. She could do it like any other person can, but she can't do it through her druid ability. She can do her own through her druid ability, okay. but not not anyone else's. But you could just say that she is attempting to cover other people's tracks as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll she'll do that. Yeah. If if nothing else, people will think there are twenty four people. Mm. Yes, instead exactly. of 25 the surprise druid they weren't expecting <laughs> yeah, exactly no one expects it will, it will make the difference <laughs> <laughs> okay so um that's fine and uh so you are at that point it is now 5 a.m all right and you okay. are in that very narrow thin passageway that leads up to the what you remember was a um a hole 
in the floor of that basement. Yep. Right. Yep. So you are, um, you're about 120 feet away, 150 feet away, three squares away, which is yep. when Mort calls a halt and says, we need to get ready. Right. So I'm, I'm suggesting then that uh, Mort, I guess is probably a good choice moves ahead, you know, no light infravision approaching the hole. And we'll, I would probably guess we'll almost immediately determine if there's some kind of work operations going on in there. It'll be loud or, you know, talking or whatever. Uh, if the, if the five fingers and cods wallop are asleep in there, you know, maybe we can sneak up on them, but, um, Mort's volunteering to go scope it out ahead using infravision. Okay. So if there's a better suggestion, then great. Yeah. Before we, before we do that, I have a couple of things I can, I can throw out. So Avricios did bring locate object as a spell. Like that's what his prepared spell today mm. is uh, his third mm. level. I like where uh, you're at. My intention was to use that on gear that we've seen before. So we are familiar with Cod's, um, his armor, his stuff. So we, we could uh, locate it on like his, the armor that we've seen him wearing. Um, if we're worried about um, Estelle or any of the Wine Dark cohort guys in there too, we could do it on that. But um, it lasts for six turns. Its range is 120 feet. So... Mm -hmm. As we start down this uh, narrow passageway, we'd know within a you know a few squares, far you know far uh, farther than where uh, infravision would kick off if um, somebody's there, or if, if that one particular piece of armor is there. Remind me on that spell: if you cast the spell and select Codswallop's armor, and you don't find it, can you switch it to another object? Hmm. Let's see. I don't. I don't think so. The caster can sense either. the direction, but not the distance of an object. One of two types of objects may be located. A general class, so an object of a general class, uh, like a stairway, an altar, or something like that, um, in which case the nearest object of that type shows up, or a specific object and a specific object which the caster can clearly visualize in all aspects. So you can't switch it, you, so just one object. You could yeah. just be the... We let you go first. You go the furthest, you know, you go well away from us and you just try and locate armor and anyone in, above you within, you know, the, it's a 50 foot square room, right? So if you're 100 feet away from us and you're 75 feet away from the entrance to that room or 25 feet away, I guess would be better. You'd you'd detect armor within 50 feet. Uh, within 120. I'm, yeah. yeah, but I'm saying within that room. Yeah, 50 yeah, feet yeah. room, right? You'd protect armor, which we did not leave there. I don't think there was no armor nope. that we left no. behind. Nope. No. So if there's any wine dark cohort or Codswallop or anybody we're wearing armor, you would pick it up rather than trying okay. to get a specific person. Um Okay. I like it. I like it. And then you don't even have to pop up. We might even just be like, all right, well, <laughs> we're screwed. Let's go home. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I won't be able to tell like how much there is. Nor will you, if you detect Codswallop's armor. Right. You'll just know that Codswallop's there. That's all you'll know. Um, it, and I, it doesn't have to be armor. I'm just, you know, suggesting you could. Yeah, it's not bad. David? Uh, do five fingered uh, mercenaries count as a class of object? Probably not. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, I specifically cannot locate creatures. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that'd be handy or, you know, for free more can stick his head above the hole, get it shot full of arrows, I suppose. But I mean, what do you want to do? David's got a thought. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is not a good one. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> No, I mean, but precisely what you said. It's 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 such an interesting idea. At the same time, like you said, you could just look, and we could save that for, for instance, if you know, we wanted to escape through Plunger Town, locating some apes so we don't run into them. If that's the way you guys want to run on one up with it, uh, I'd rather have object, it then than though. now. Yeah. Well, object would be uh, actually that's a good question. What well, well, it depends, <laughs> it depends on what uh, uh, the forearm apes were wearing. I can't recall. Uh, go, Ted. Okay. I got an idea. Uh, 
it just to sweeten the deal of just going and looking is Mort borrows the ring that Yost is wearing and we oh, make yeah. Mort invisible to go poke his head through the hole. We keep forgetting we can do that. <laughs> I mean, so do we want to, you want to do that and save the, uh, uh, save the spell? I mean, we can do it. I think it comes down to what you think would be most effective uh, for a given level of danger. Right. right. Well, your, I, your let's, plan let's, is let's, less dangerous, but it doesn't. It only tells us that there's someone wearing armor there. Yeah. Whereas so I guess has, you, you see what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think the question is, what do we do if we get that answer? Right. If it makes a difference or not. If I cast that spell and we detect armor, right. you're still gonna go look. Yep. Exactly. That's Which right. is why I was saying maybe no. just look. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. just go look. I'll save the spell. We don't need to do it. We need. We can use All it right. if we need it. Okay, so it's more. creative thinking, and I like it. So yeah, Mortal put on the Yost's ring. Okay. Have Avaricius turn him invisible. He will. Approach. I go blind. By the way, he goes blind. Okay. He sits quietly amongst the goblins who huddle around him like kittens looking for warmth. Okay. And then Mort will go up to the 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 little hatch hole in the floor, and you know, just like uh, like Martin Sheen coming up out of the water in Apocalypse Now, right? Like that's what we're. Okay, That's so it takes a, it takes a turn to get to that point. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah All right. Well, I don't see it. we have a choice. So it's just Yost alone, right? No, no, it's Mort. Oh, Mort. Mort's invisible. Mort is borrowing the ring from Yost. Oh, to Mort. Become okay. Invisible Sorry. Okay. To yeah. do this thing. Got it. Okay. All right. So Mort, you creep up in the darkness alone. Um, you hear nothing. It is five a.m. in the morning. Uh, yeah. You see that the uh, the hole in the ceiling is still there. So remember, it's sort of like a very very steep slope that you can probably scrabble up. Um, it might be hard to be completely silent scrabbling up. Yeah. So he will look at the, the, the rubble and, and, and I'm looking for two things. One, has anyone, you know, booby trapped or alarmed us in some way? Like, are there bells or something? Okay. So uh, that, yeah. So first of all, uh, what you do notice is when you approach, it doesn't look like the 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 scree fall there has been disturbed anywhere in in any way. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. But you do see that there is flickering uh, torch light or or lantern light coming yeah. from beyond the hole. Yeah. It's, it's very very quiet. And also, um, it's a little. You have to maybe investigate a little bit further. But the the torch light seems to be flickering through some sort of um, barrier that likely wasn't there before. Uh, barrier some sort of, in front of this hole kind yeah, of covering barrier? covering the hole yeah yeah ah okay so looking at the rocks i don't see anything changed or modified i see something maybe blocking the hole mm -hmm. okay yeah so the next thing will be to try and and if you know if taking a turn i think makes this work right then that's probably worth it but looking for those rocks which are most stable like you know, like when you're rock climbing, you stop and you look around and you say, okay, that rock will take my weight and that rock and this, these don't look good. So he wants to, you know, plant one foot, plant the next foot. Yeah. Do you have a moving, do you have a goblin move silently thing or is that a hide and shadows thing? Um, reminding myself, I'm looking at my character sheet. I move silently three and six. Okay. So, uh, why don't you, why don't you bump that up to a four and six? Because you're being very careful in describing how you're moving silently. Okay. Why don't you roll that? And give it a roll. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to say a little prayer to Thoth. Two. Okay. Excellent. That's, that's good. All right. So, I'm yeah, you're fine. very careful. Uh, I am yeah. going to burn another turn because um, you're being super yeah. careful. Okay. Yeah, that was you, what I figured. Yeah. So, you no longer need to use your infravision now. In fact, the, the torchlight is sort of you know, allowing you to kind of see the general area. So you're, okay. you're basically holding on with all four of your limbs to the side of the wall right, right now. And right. your, your face is like looking right up at the, um, at the hole. Now the hole was rough, right? Like it was like some sort of natural yeah. opening or something like that, or something roughly, uh, caved in. Um, now before where that was just a small, like three foot opening that you guys all had to slip through that three foot opening has not been modified in any sort of way, but laid over the top of it. Uh, on on the basement side of things, right, like uh, beyond the hole, um, is mm -hmm. a rough lattice work of um, uh, hastily tied together 
with twine, um, sticks and twigs, right? Just sort of like a, like a, like a, like a, like a cross oh. hatch that has been roughly and quickly, but, um, but thoroughly covering the entire thing. And Looking you, at it, do I get the sense that this is, it doesn't sound like it. It doesn't feel like this is really intended to block the hole in any substantive way but perhaps more to disguise the hole? Is that what I'm looking at? Uh, well, you can see through it. So you can see vaguely, even though the lattice work is pretty thick, you can see the light, but you can't see the source of the torchlight, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no like rug on top that would have disguised it. Um, really hidden it. Right, you know what I mean? Like, so you can kind of see into the room a little bit. So if I were to carefully reach and pry apart some of the branches, could I look through it or can I, lift one edge of it an inch to look you know above the floor line do you attempt to do that it I'll looks like that pin. would be possible gonna, to do yes i'm gonna like pry it up with the pin. Uh, yeah yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be like uh uh hicks in alien when he's looking in the ceiling right and he uses his weapon to lift the ceiling panel up and i have a mirror if you want a mirror for what it's worth Ooh, yeah it's 20 minutes away that's <laughs> like okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm so, going to lift it up just a an inch just to get my eye up in there, you know. Okay. So you the when you t what what are you using your finger or knife or pin. a pin the knife, oh, my, my oh, sword, the, my magic sword. Yeah, so you use your sword just a little bit to raise up like one stick. The um it appears because they're all tied together that the whole thing just lifts up with almost no effort at all, right? Um you lift it up. And as it lifts up, you hear far above, like on the ceiling of the basement above, you hear a, a dingle, 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 dingle Shit. of a bell. Okay. And you hear uh, from some distance away, from above, like way above, you hear like scrambling in some shouts. Multiple shouts. Mm hmm. Yeah. Just, just to clarify okay. spatially. Did, what is the, that's just because, forgive my uh, poor memory. Is the stash right in the room that we're we're peeking into right now? Yes. Or is it further up? Yes. We yes. better run in here right now, y'all. It's a rush. It's it's time for a race, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I hear the sound. I hear the shouts in the distance, like fifty feet of distance, or well, you know that you know that there is a the... staircase that leads up into yeah. the uh, the gladiator cells, right? In the so basement. Like I hear it up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. Lift it. I'm invisible. I lift it up the rest of the way. Look around. If the room is empty, yeah, I'm gonna jump out. Yeah, let it close and get out of the way. Okay. Yeah. So you and you, go you, and go silent and just sit. I love it. Okay. So yeah. So you you <laughs> you pop up. There is no one there, but uh, but you right. can see that there are uh, numerous torches. But we'll just say like one in, on each wall, um, uh, the, that are illuminating the room. Right. The it doesn't look like that secret panel on the, uh, what did we say, the eastern wall? Um, mm -hmm. uh, because it has been messed with in any way, shape, shape or form, okay? Okay. Like, it doesn't look like anyone would know it was there, right? Um, right. And, uh, uh, but it does look like there has been some uh, people down here, like have set up the torches, right? There are some crates mm -hmm. and things like that down here as well. It's been swept a little bit. And you can see that um, the stairs up leading up are also um, well lit. And there's, there is a uh, light, light up there as well. And you can see shadows that are circling around up there. Then you can hear booted mm -hmm. feet. You hear a woman's voice that you recognize. Yeah, David. <laughs> I'm really going into left field here. If possible, because we are all at the ready, right? We 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 would have known that he saw some sort of hatch before going up there. Yes, you communicated mm -hmm. this to us. Oh, yep. Wait, wait, wait. How would how would we? Well, that's what I'm asking. Would you would did yeah. you come? I mean, we were at the bottom of the hatch, right? We're right there at the base. We're not we looking actually up. Actually, make it clear how far would ahead you, of you guys I was. You I was imagining. Care. And the reason I was originally going to do it was I was at least infravision distance ahead of you, right? Out of torchlight. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, right now. Oh! Um, so I don't think I, that realistically you two, like, I don't think that any of you guys would really understand what was going on. That's not in great detail. Will we hear the bells? Um, yeah, I guess you would hear the bells. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. It's too meta. I was going to suggest we pull a, an animal out of the sack like a chicken and throw it up there as if that triggered the bells. 
or like a bird. I don't, or I don't have a problem with you guys so knowing what's going on meta wise, but I would say that you guys are at least 60 feet back from that hole. Right. Yeah, um, I so it. I would say that's about, that's like a square, right? Yeah. Which is a safe place to be right now, honestly. Yeah. Because if they won't see you when they look at the hole and they open it up and they look down and they're not going to see you. Okay. So and more, they won't even see you if they climb down a little bit. More when you, when you slip up into the room, where do you go? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, move east along the north wall. East along the north wall. Okay, cool. Um, there are some, do you want to hide behind? I know you're invisible. Do you want to hide behind like a crate or something like that? If there is something to hide behind, I absolutely will. And if I see the string, um, do, I, do I see the string for the bells? Is it very yeah. obvious? So what you, okay. So we'll say like you, 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 you can find a crate that you kind of huddle behind You're invisible. You can hear voices up at the top of the stairs. When you mm -hmm. look back the way that you came, you can see that even though it was rudimentary, it was fairly effective. They had, they had formed that lattice work that was just rough, like laid over top, um, over top yeah. the hole. And then there was, um, that twine that they had used to wrap everything. There was the length of it that was connected to everything that basically has been, you know, ran up the side of the wall. And is it tied to like yeah. a string of bells that kind of uh, depends from the uh, top of the cavern? And so, like any movement I, of the any movement of the lattice work at all would cause the you know would cause the bells to jingle. Could I bite through that twine before I go hide? Uh, you you can. It will cause the you know that it will call the bells to fall on the ground and jingle louder. If that matters to you, maybe you think the geek is up already. I'd say leave They're it coming. intact. Yeah. Well, my thinking was that, like, you know, oh, they get down here and it's like, oh, like a rat bit through this or something. Yeah, what I was going to say, at least to protect our asses down at the base, because I don't think there's any way it could achieve anything at the top. But knowing that we were going to infiltrate something, I don't think it would be foreign to us having used the bells an hour prior with the bear that a bell trap was triggered. And not, not getting any sense that he's, like, coming back down, that something's going on. That doesn't yeah. mean we can help him, obviously, but I'm thinking to right. myself... Yeah, as 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 uh, and, someone who doesn't want an army to come down, that I might pull a rat from the sack while while, while Matt's blind and uh -huh. just send it in the direction, just so if they were to open the hatch and it's they hear or anything scurrying around at the base in that direction, they might rationalize right. and that's the case. I don't know okay. that that would succeed or they'd even see it. But do I'm you do to it? Prevent them from. That's what I'd like to do if that's okay. okay. Yeah, and yeah, Mark, yeah, and yeah, you were also right. you were chewing through the rope. Yeah, I'm work. just gonna uh, chew it and then and then move off. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, uh, Everest is just like what you know. You can hear it, but you're completely blind. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, okay you're you're rat, whatever, whatever his name is, uh, Richie, <laughs> Richie, Richie the Rat, uh, Gangrene. Um, he kind of yanks on Mizofaze's cloak, and you know he's like, "What's going on, boss? I heard you over there." It, 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 it seems there was a trap triggered probably by our dear friend and I, I, I if he's if he's gone then uh, we're all gone so uh, uh, I'm gonna go into my dear friend's rat bag here don't worry about it don't ask questions he loves rats and I'm gonna get the fattest rat I can see and I'm gonna name him uh, Onwear the second <laughs> and I'm gonna pull him out <laughs> what are we doing that for what are we doing that for boat? it's time for the wet work right yeah wet work yeah. And he like he like <laughs> he licks his blade. He's like, just give me the give me the wear bolt. We're ready. And you see like oh. you know twenty pairs of like red gleaming oh, yeah. eyes in the dark, just like drool, <laughs> like they're fucking ready. Yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm starting to like say, these guys. After all, <laughs> well, I love, I love, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, oh, it's coming, but they're going to be surprised because they'll think it's just a rat down here. They have oh, to I, clean th up I thought it was dinner time. Trap. All right, no, wait, wait, wait for I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send it out. Wait and once they rat. come down for it, we pounce on them, just like the trap. That we're uh, like the mice there. I don't like that. You want us to get closer, boss? Closer <laughs> to the hole? No, stay here. Oh, actually, actually, we won't move the light source. We'll leave it where we are, right? On blind, poor blind Everest. He is just sitting in a what, corner. Yeah, yeah, what's, what, what's, what's going on? One second, David. What's the radius on that uh, continual light? Uh, radius That's on the correct. continual light, I believe it's 30. 30, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know, that, that illuminates 30 feet in front of you, but be aware that. Um, if, uh, if anyone approaches directly over the hole, I would say that they would be able to see some sort of illumination. Okay. So I'm going to say, squash the light. 
Well, here's what I'm gonna say. Oh, we can do that too. We could we can cover. We have a bedroll. Literally, we just got so we can cover Avaricio well, through the bedroll. I mean, it's it's a doesn't um, matter. He can cover. Yeah, it's, it's my point. Here's, here's, okay. yeah. here's what I'm suggesting we do. Here's what I'm suggesting we do. I'm gonna try to be very efficient about it. Squelch the light. Yep. Goblins who can see in the dark. Wall on either side of the wall. Process down. 30 yep. feet, not all the way to the base where they can be seen. And yep. we send a rat through to squeak around. Okay. If they open, whoever they may be, if anyone other than Ted or, or, or Mort were to come down and see this rat and pursue it to like cover, cover the noise, right? Be like, oh, this is just going to tr- trigger the trap again. We got to kill this fucking rat. We murder them. <laughs> okay. We have goblins ready like, oh, hello, here's the real. Got it. All right, so they all line up like colonial marine style, like on yes, either side, right? Like they've exactly, all got their blades exactly. out. They're all goes like, Ehh. and I'm going to be right in the center <laughs> with a big grin ear to ear and the ice wand ready, like a shotgun down okay. the hall, 30 so, feet away. Yeah, yeah now yeah. you are, Mizophase, you are only going by the light of the um, torches up in the room ahead. So just be aware yes. that your immediate environs are like completely dark. You could just hear I'm and blind. smell goblins yeah. on all side of you. Um, um, you can hear Avaricio sort of struggling to put the to put the light away. Mort, you're up top. Yeah, Mort. Yost is going to stay with Avaricio uh, and guide him as necessary. Okay, cool. Okay. Hey, what about Elizabeth? Good. Oh, I forgot about. Um, well, she's uh, passing without trace. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll be in the back. She'll be ready to kind of cover us if we need to retreat. Okay, so just remember that uh, both Yost and Elizabeth can also not see. Um, Okay, so uh, in the dark. Okay, so up top, Mort, you are hidden. You have bitten through the thing. Um, you can hear squeaking, a sudden squeaking from down below. Um, you're not really sure what's going on, uh, but you can hear it down there. And uh, and then coming down the stairs, all right, basically two at a time, are a number of uh, men, and they are definitely like wine dark mercenaries. Okay, there's two of them at first, all right. Then there is another two one of which is a normal mercenary and another one which is um, uh, Cyrus, the blonde haired one, right? With uh, with the, he's got his toothpick in his mouth and um, he has his, uh, he is he is wearing, he has a sword and dagger out, like a, like a parrying dagger almost bearing and uh, all of the men are wearing um, leather and have shields out and they have a sword out, okay? So all the men, all the mercenaries have swords and shields. Cyrus has a sword and dagger. He's wearing segmentata. The other ones are wearing leather, okay? Um, and you see your heart quickens in rage and anger as you see the final rank of people comes down. Uh, first, you see Estelle, and Estelle is decked out more than you've seen before. She has, like, this beautiful chain mail on. She's bearing, like, a large kite shield, and she has a wicked-looking uh, uh, flanged mace that she's bearing. And she has one uh, – well, she's bearing the shield and the, and the mace as so she comes down very, very carefully. And she looks like she knows what she's doing. Very, very cautious and fearful, but ready, right? And then in her shadow, small behind, comes crawling Codswallop. Oh, hi. <laughs> Lousy weasel codswallop, you've eaten your last potato, you bastard. He looks fine, <laughs> a little bit fatter than normal, like he's been well fed. He's wearing his normal stud leather that he was wearing before. He has a bow strung across him, but he is wielding a light hammer. Okay. All right. Um, they so are I'm all going uh, to yeah. stay put and stay hidden, uh, observing and, um, um, you know, looking for opportunity i i if 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 codswall if he wanders into my strike zone i i, <laughs> <laughs> I may have to murder him uh, yes. which i recognize as being tactically a terrible decision um <laughs> i'm i'm more concerned about uh estelle wandering into my strike zone because uh there's only so much coup de gras on a fully armored opponent can do. Um, right. I, I have no particular beef against the wine dark guys. Um, so here's the deal. The, they obviously know what they're doing, so they don't stay clumped up. Right. Yeah. Um, they, uh, you can see Cyrus, he's, he puts a finger to his lips. Right. And he kind of directs people to go to either side right into the dark areas where the torches don't reach. And he tells them to go search out those places first. He puts a hand up for Estelle and Coswald to stay back on the bottom, mm-hmm. uh, on the bottom uh, step at the, at the very base. So now everyone's down there. Um, give me one second. I just got to look something up. Um, one sec. 
staircase okay. is like kind of in the middle of the room, right? The staircase is, uh, uh, no, it's like on the, um, it's on the, basically like the, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's more on the southern side, but so, but yeah, and like not on the southern wall. Correct, yeah. Um, okay. And so they uh, they stay back there. They, let's see, I'm trying to think here. Um, first of all, Thanks, one buddy. thing you noticed more is that you remember clearly whenever they were forming up at the Broken Head and, the, and uh, Bergdorf called these men separately, that there was a team of five mercenaries plus Cyrus. There are only four mercenaries down here plus Cyrus. Okay. So one man's missing. Okay. okay. Um, in addition, you're not really sure how Codswall ended up with them, but there he is. Uh, okay. So looking... seven, seven people, seven people total, right? The, four, the, four, the five, five, five yeah. wine darks, yes, Estelle correct. and Codswall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Estelle is also, you can see that um, slung through her pack on her back is a long um, staff. Uh, and that staff is made out of a slim alabaster, like a white alabaster. Um, and there is an open hand on the top, like formed a, 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 like a carved alabaster hand on the top, which triggers some sort of memory to you more, but you can't quite place it at this moment, but you've never seen her wield that before. Okay. Um, she stays back. Uh, so Cyrus kind of goes with his men and they start searching out the darker areas around. Okay. So there's, uh, there are, Let's say there are two mercenaries that are approaching your position. Okay, the rest of them are are, are moving around the edges, but they're, it looks like they're going to converge on the um, pit. Is there yes. any noise? Now is a good time for a break, John. <laughs> uh, you want to take a break now? Yeah, sure. We can. Take I would a like break. to take a break. Yes. Okay. Sure. But we'll, we'll let you ponder that for a moment. What, I missed what Jason <laughs> said, though. So, uh, uh, Jason, what David Jason. said. Who the I hell is Jason? Jason? Who have you been seeing, Ted? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I have another gaming group. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no. All right. We will be We will be right back. All right. We are back. Bladder's empty. Beer's full. All right. So, we are in the midst of it. Um, David, you were saying something when uh, when we took a break. Or no? Uh, oh, I was just uh, pinging the rat. Oh, uh, yes, the rat. Yeah. If so, it's relevant. So they're moving carefully around. Codswallop and Estelle are hanging back. Um, uh, two men are approaching uh, Mort's position behind the crates. Um, when you see Cyrus, um, he stops and he puts up a finger. And you see him like tilt his head a little bit and he listens. And everyone can hear the uh, rat squealing down below. Um, and... Uh, you, you, uh, it, uh, Cyrus calls back and he's like, do you hear that? And he says it like really softly. And you hear a, a, a female voice from by the steps. You, you hear one moment to Stell, and she, everyone stops and she moves carefully forward. Right. And, uh, she's, she basically says it's nothing to be alarmed with rat. Perhaps. Yes. Sounds like it. She moves and she, she they basically step behind her as she kind of approaches the pit, right? And she sort of peers down, kind of looks down around. Um, and she says, yes, that is a rat down there. It looks like our, and she sort of fingers like the, the end, she kind of picks up like the shorn end of the twine. It's like something has disturbed it. Was it this perhaps? One way to find out perhaps. And she is going to do a thing oh i didn't expect uh -oh. a thing i wonder oh i can't wait uh. um so better not be true seeing she kind of gestures uh she she gestures kind of not, not imperiously but she just sort of gestures to one of the men um to the lattice work and uh, one of the men like carefully kind of picks it up and moves it to the side and she kneels down Push her in the pit, Dad. Push her in the pit. 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 <laughs> and she'll die. Push her in the pit. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, David. Hold on. <laughs> sorry, you don't have to. You don't have to. You know, sorry, sorry. Devil on your shoulder. <laughs> um, John, how far, in order to find a suitable hiding place, how far away from Estelle's unexposed you, you bed? You don't have to do that, Ted. <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, is this like, she's not like within arm's reach, right? Like, I'm 20 no, feet away or something. Yeah, you're like 30 feet away right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm thinking it, David. 
we'll see how it goes. Yeah. What's so she doing? she's also got like a, a wall, not a wall, but there's like men all around her, right. That are, um, and some of them are kind of peering down with her and some of her are kind of looking back, just kind of on guard. They like, they know what they're doing. Right. Um, they do look a little bleary eyed. I will say like they've been woken up. Good all the night. Um, they, um, and she, uh, she kind of, she's looking down the pit. She kind of puts her hand, uh, she puts down her shield and she uh, takes her shield arm and she kind of reaches back and kind of moves her fingers a little bit. And someone puts a torch in her hand. Okay. And she puts that torch down into the pit and she sort of weighs it down. And, uh, she, she's like, ah, where are you? Where are you? And then she starts to pray silently whispering underneath her breath. Okay. And then you can hear. Um, so the rat, the rat is still squealing. Like the rats in between, like the rest of the party and you guys and the goblins are like, like they are like, oh my God, <laughs> they, they so want to do something. Right. Yeah. David. Yeah. Do I hear her praying? Uh, yeah, you could probably hear her under your voice. Yeah. Uh Oh, don't kill all our goblins. Don't kill all our goblins. <laughs> So brain full of large spiders is a scroll I have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you want to cast it or no? What's what's going on? As is sleep. I think that guys I don't know if you've got the juice to power a sleep spell on on a stell. Scroll. Yeah. So brain full uh, of large spiders is um an illusionist spell. So that's not going to work for you, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Like, oh, you're right. Uh, sleep, use... sleep will work though. Sleep's not bad. I think I'm gonna, guys. <laughs> yeah, no. no. if I cast sleep, it may not hit her, but it might. If I do it, you'll know I'm doing it. And if you want to do some shovey shove, it right. may be the best opportunity you have. If we think combat's the outcome. Because if I, she's about I to would, detect, it's gonna it's gonna break out. I think. Well, well, yeah. I mean, it depends on what she's casting. Um, if it's you know, detect is rat real or is rat summoned? You know, I don't know. Right? Are but you casting like, sleep before she, she casts also... her spell? That's the plan. Yes. Okay, so you're casting sleep right now. Sure. I'm committing I'll to cast. it. Okay. okay. If y'all are okay All with right. it, I do. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it. Are you attempting to, to 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 cast it against a single creature or the total of two d eight hit dice? Of creatures of four his dice or lower i think we do 2d8 yeah do right. that yep because it i mean estelle might still be swinging but you could probably put down some of the wine dark guys i think if we can put down some wine dark dice and you can shove her into a pit she can't survive a broken neck i'll put it that way right or well she's not going to survive 20 dog piling goblins with knives man not either right but that's what i'm getting at right okay yeah john if if um if if like wine dark cohort guys start like falling asleep or doing something weird while she's like bent over into the hole, Mort will absolutely move up and attempt to push her in. Uh, okay, yeah. So um, I guess like yeah, you'd have to be a, like a split second thing in order to get your spell off before she gets hers off. Um, but sure. we'll say that you do it. So um, roll two d eight. Big money, no whammies. Big money, no whammies. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, David. It's Not 11. Bad. 11. 11. Okay. Uh, let's, da, da. All right. So that's going to be, let's see. 240. It's fine. I'm sure you put Cod- Codswallop to sleep. Oh. <laughs> that's perfect, though, because I can torture him later now. Uh, Mort, what level are you? Five. Uh, five hit dice. Yes. Okay. So we have. I thought I was out of the range of this thing. Oh, oh no! Um, oh damn, one. David! I, I might oh, be no. a <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know what? You can be asleep one. and invisible. You'll be fine. Yeah, actually, I'd probably be the only survivor. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. Man. Okay. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> So you uh, you whip out your scroll as much as uh, and um, yeah I, I yeah it's pretty the thing cool. Is I think she would yeah Go it's ahead. dark that's the that's the issue but I guess it's fine um, 
okay so you you read off the scroll the scroll dissipates into the air and uh the magic pixie dust floats forward from the moats uh from the from the arcane writing forward into the air in front of you um uh they wisp out over um estelle who is uh kind of looking and she kind of She's in the midst of her praying, but she doesn't stop as she sort of looks at them around her, but doesn't stop. And they kind of goes over her. And uh, um, but then uh, beyond Mort, from where your position is, you can see the moats also kind of float around you and kind of fill out through the air. And you see drop, 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 drop. And you see Cyrus and all of the men and Codswallop all drop to the ground. Quiet. <laughs> Okay. Estelle is like, uh, she does now she's looking down, right? So she doesn't see it immediately. And, and, and this has kind of happened simultaneously, right? So she casts her spell and she's like, right? Right. And, and then you see the, the rat, which is in between all of you, um, also, uh, drops to the ground, uh, asleep. And she, uh, and she, and she, uh, stops and she says something in like a strange language that almost sounds like squeaking rat. And then she curses in 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 our content. She's like, "God damn it!" And and um and she kind of moves her and she's and then she turns back around and you can see like she raises up and she's like, "What the hell is going?" Go Ted, yeah. go Ted, go Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so before she turned around, as like as soon as Mort saw the guy's falling asleep, yeah, she's bent into the hole. Yeah, Mort's gonna run up and and you're, he's a sixteen strength goblin. Yeah, he's like I'm imagining like just full on body checking her right down to the hole. Okay, so she's super cautious. She knows something's amiss. All right. So what I'm going right. to do is, um, but um, but you're basically ambushing her. So I'm going to give you um, a chance to surprise her. So I'll give you a three and six chance to surprise. So a one to three is good for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lysion, be with us. Yeah. Oh, one. <laughs> okay yeah so she's like she's turning around like in in consternation and she's her eyes widen as she's seeing the bodies around her all right and then you just come out of nowhere asleep uh invisible right and you just push her right just barrel right into her the idea being to knock her down i know it's not a very wide hole but i was counting on her being sort of hunched over it right and trying to land on her back or you know whatever in such a way to force her head down into the hole and just let her go in sure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give her a save versus petrification um, if yeah. she fails to save, it's just she goes straight down in the hole. If she makes it, I'm going to say that she um, uh, falls prone and she's basically like hanging onto the edge of it. Okay. In which case, I'm going to start chopping her fingers off. So uh, she needs a 12 or higher on a d20 in order to succeed. Here we go. And she fails with a five. So, so you basically put <laughs> David, David, she, David, 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 David. She, she lets out a you. she lets out a short <laughs> scream and she just uh, she plummets down the hole. Dish, 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 and she's going to take um, uh, uh, d six. She's going to take five nice. points five points of damage, which does not knock her out. Um, and she lands and um, she lands in a in a heap at the at the base. Right, um, her torch basically spills out. Uh, onto the ground. I'm going to say that there's a one in six chance that it goes out. Hold on, David. Oh, it goes out. <laughs> okay, so the torch like <laughs> it is not her day. <laughs> yeah, so it, it goes out. There's dark. There's just darkness. There's work, still the light work. coming from the torches up top, right? Um, work, and she has work. no idea what's down there around her. So you can see her struggling, and she's sort of moaning in pain, and she's sort of picking herself up. Um, and uh, what do you guys do? So, John, can I just uh, add a little flavor here for, for myself, whether it succeeds or not? Can I say with the light cascading down this this chasm, glints of dust, you know, that it might catch the reflection of a few goblin blades, certainly. But one other blade, one not particularly exciting blade, a, a short blade, one might say, a little rusty, but that's seen blood before and passed between many hands, emerge out from a cloak. <laughs> And step forward oh, with the no. goblins. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. And onward press, dagger. And press the, yes. And onward dagger has come all the way from from his body to <laughs> to, to, to my hands. The simple mundane dagger. And I'd say we can we all try to dogpile her and uh, you know uh, give her a little jab jab. Also, I mean, I, I guess as soon as Mort does the attack push, he's visible again. Abrisos can now see. Yes, that's true. That's very true. But you are still yep. in darkness. Um, I mean, we're so, still in darkness. So, so hey guys, everyone's what, in what, darkness. What are you doing? So the 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 goblins can see. 
uh, in, what I'm saying is I want to step into the light that's I, I, being cast from I understand. I'm talking about Everisios, though, and Yost Sorry, and, and Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. All can't see. What they're seeing, though, is they're seeing Mizophase's dark form basically emerge into the light of the torchlight that's being sent down from the shaft um, and uh, illuminating this sort of scene of Estelle Pana picking herself up, and you see them kind of encroaching upon. Um, uh, Mort, you're kind of seeing that as well from the top end, all right? Um, right. I So uh, she is not... This is not one of those situations where you can just suddenly shiv her, right? Like, this is going to be combat. Sure. I want to be clear. Um, are you really going to attempt to kill Estelle? Have you thought that? Yes, through? I have. I, I, I mean, we just put... Oh, well, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not speaking for everyone. <laughs> you have. I, David, <laughs> have thought it through thoroughly. <laughs> and, and, and have no qualms with killing her. I will. I do want to say one thing, John. Again, disagree if you want to. I think falling down a pit probably means she's not holding on to her weapon anymore. So if it turns into combat, I get it. But I feel like it'd be a disarming experience to fall that far. I don't think you're going to like hold on to your gear for dear life. But if you disagree, that's fine. I'm just saying, you know, uh, it's a stunning experience. So I, whether whether we get into kill her or she, not, if she wins know, initiative, uh, if she wins initiative, yeah. she will be able to gather her weapons but not attack. Perfect. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> So if if we ki if we kill her, it's immediately. I'm not saying that this might not be something that has to happen in a bit. We're erasing the information that we could get from her. Sure. Before we have a chance to ask her anything. Absolutely. I uh, am okay with attempting to keep her alive, but I know with a certainty that we have 20 goblins that we have to motivate not to kill her. One and two, she might kill us in the attempt to arrest her in some way so uh, realistically yeah. beyond blood beyond bloodthirst is a person who's going to who's i'm a level one you know magic user one hit i'm dead half the goblins she's sweeping away on so if i don't take the immediate opportunity to attack i'm not going to live this encounter i guarantee you and a good portion of goblins probably won't before y'all intercede unless you have something to knock her out right now right unless you have some way of paralyzing her i think that's the, the main concern you know, go ahead, Ted. Which I, which I might, if the spell goes oh, off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, the dagger I also has totally two, like two ends, yeah. right? Yeah. My, my uh, question here, John, is, um, I mean, I recognize Estelle immediately, right? But she's up armored. She's got on all this gear and stuff. Is her? Is she wearing a helmet? Is there some plausible, we didn't recognize you kind of play here? No. Okay. Yeah, you cannot plead ignorance with this, unfortunately. Well, she also okay. hasn't seen any of our party yet. Okay. Right, you could operate from darkness or something, but I think yeah. you guys need to... I'm, I, I'm not going to... I'm at the top of the hole. You guys... Okay, you're, the, you're moving aggressively okay. towards her. She, You're not attempting to parlay. This is all I really needed to know. So uh, why don't we... Right. Um, uh, for, first of all, declarations. So um, uh, she is not casting a spell is anyone else uh casting a spell i uh avaricious will cast a spell Avaricious is casting a spell very good okay so Avaricious, you you cannot move um and you basically can only target either yourself or whatever is in that light okay uh let us roll for initiative so is oh. is i i can see her you is can see correct? her in that light the... yes yeah okay yeah uh, and she is prone I, correct is she she's prone yeah she's picking herself up i got a three David? I think you should roll. I, I think David, you should roll. All right, I'll roll. Three. Tie. Roll again. I got a one. You got a six. <laughs> okay. Right, so she is uh, struggling to get herself up. So it is your guys go first. What do you do? All right. Well, um, why don't so, uh, I? Uh, what, you didn't declare spells, though, yeah. Matt. Right? He did. No, he, I did. I did. Oh, you did. Oh, go, 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 go. Casting. Sorry, I'm sorry. First thing yeah. is. First thing is. Uh, Morale, movement, missile, spell casting, melee. No bad. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh Avery, you're supposed to cast hold person. Oh, okay. Very smart. I love it. And her. Okay. Hold person is da, 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 da. okay. All right. So in movement, um in, uh, in the movement phase, do the goblins sort of move up and start to surround her? Uh if you yes. want. Are are you ordering them to basically annihilate her? Well, if he costs hold person, what I'm going to do is order them to tie her up with a shit ton of rope. 
Okay, but they're but they're but you're t telling them to move aggressively towards her, yeah. I want them, like, to, yeah, move aggressively. I want them to, yeah. to dogpile her and incapacitate yeah, her along okay. with this. Yes. All right, so uh, Everest goes from the back. You cast um, whole person on her, like hold force, hold forth your fist. Um, she doesn't seem to take any notice of it as she continues to try to pick herself up. Um, the Can I just uh, have the goblins literally jump on top of her as she's prone to keep her from standing up. Uh, Twenty goblins on top of her. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That would that would certainly keep her from moving, right? Strength contest, perhaps. Uh, yeah, you don't want them to attack her. Look, I mean, okay, sorry, I don't want to prolong this, guys. Real quick thought. Again, I think there's a lot of value in keeping information with her. Just to throw it out there, right? Like the 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 central friction that we're dealing with is like how far or how little we commit to a course of action. Uh, right. Capturing her right now is an act of war against Kronos. There's no returning back from that. So she's a hostage that we're using, knowing that we might eventually have to kill her or barter for her, right? That's a, that's a great chip, but it's not one in which we are like choosing to like spare the relationship with her. I really don't think there's any like weaseling out of that, if I'm, if, in my opinion. So if we want information from her, we have to treat her essentially as such, as like an asset that we are expending and maybe throwing away in some capacity afterwards, which just sounds terrible, but that's sort of the option we have. Offer it a cross or something like that as, as a, a sacrifice. Um, or we kill her, right? We don't deal with the complexity of that. And we have this time to go get all this money, right? And beat it, which was the goal. Because if we're trying to deal with her and potentially more wine darks above, waking up in a matter of rounds, right? While she's screaming and yelling, or whatever, we're not getting the loot. The loot's not, so do we want her or the loot? In other words, it's kind of the decision in my mind right now. I would kill her for the loot because that was the goal. If y'all don't want the loot anymore, that's fine. Sorry, Ted, that was long. No, no, that's fine. Um, I would argue that dog the goblins dogpiling her, yeah. taking her prisoner at this point is not necessarily the same as, you know, imprisoning her and enslaving her or whatever. It's like, you know, we dogpile her in order to, like, we haven't attacked her in any lethal sense at this point, right? It's like, you can still say, Estelle, you know, why did you double cross us? Like, this doesn't have to be like this. You know, that Codswallop's a dirty, you know, dirty rotten so-and-so. And, you know, we were always nice to you. Like, why are you treating us like this kind of approach? I mean, she's never demonstrated herself to be an unreasonable individual or nowhere near as crazy as we are. Um, so I don't think that, that dogpiling her and trying to, you know, stop her from her attacking us at this point is necessarily uh an irrevocable act but we will have to kill whatever. all the wine darks immediately so they don't wake up in a moment so so in other words like we're not sparing any lives and getting loot and getting estelle it's too much we're we're we're, de we're digging ourselves deeper into an impossible situation in which we're not making a decision that's finalizing which which is okay but i think it, it, it functionally speaking it's estelle or everything else like, I think it's like taking her now and running off and hoping Kronos cares because the sleep doesn't last that long. There may be more wine darks. If we kill any of the wine darks, it's an act of aggression against the wine darks, right? If we interrupt cross, which is the plan already, we already have cross as an issue. And if, if, if we, I don't know, I just, I don't see how we go, Hey, you know how we keep sabotaging and fucking up your entire plan. And you de dealt with a dragon to try to keep us from living and interrupting you. And now you're dealing with our, our sworn enemy to steal our stuff. Can you still be friends with us? Can we maybe use the end in the future? We're going back to a place where we said we would maybe not go, which is why we were stealing this to begin with. I know it's really tempting to try to preserve this, but what are we preserving? Not a friendship with her. To, to, to crawl back to a place after just beating the shit out of her and pushing her into a hole is really, really unlikely. Don't you think? We could tell her that Cross is planning to double cross her and that we're trying to save her life. And that I don't care no, about Codswallop or the Wine Darks, but I care about Estelle. After you pushed her into a hole, let, like, let's her look, look at the evidence that's look. in front of us. We just put her soldiers to sleep and pushed her into a hole. I could and have stabbed her. Piling her. She's, fu she's fine. She might have broken I, it's, her head. <laughs> anyway, the, the point is, that, yeah, okay. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I guess I, I guess my point is I would like to uh, talk with her if we can. Do we know how long sleep lasts? 
What is the duration of that? I was uh, looking like, at this. It's um, pretty long, like turns. 44 turns. I have to roll it or Jonas roll it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, so, so we yet. don't know, right? You don't know. We don't know. If it's one it D4 turns, turns, that's how many minutes? Uh, I always get my rounds and turns mixed up. <laughs> I mean, the shortest would be like 20 minutes, two turns. Yeah, two turns. Oh. We have 800 pounds of coins we're trying to steal right now. And they take down a hole with 20 goblins. Coins don't have to be our goal, but this this is the point, you know. I would I would say I, I think my vote here is to coup de gras the sleeping wine darks, because they're you know POSs anyway, and that we capture her and see how that goes. We might decide we have to kill her, we might decide something else. I don't know. Who's gonna carry her instead of gold? Oh, she can walk. I mean, she's not unconscious or asleep. We can make her walk. Do you think she's going to try to resist? Well, I would, but, you know, there's a difference between uh, one guy carrying, you know, pushing somebody along and 20 goblins surrounding you. So let, let me cut in here uh, real quick. Uh, I know yeah, I'm the one yeah. that propositioned this whole dilemma. But we are in the middle of combat, and the pace has basically dropped off the face <laughs> of the earth. And I know it's an important question that you need to deal with, but you need to come to a decision because this is it's, yeah. it's kind of killing me. <laughs> David, I mean, <laughs> Mike's ghost. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. I, I only so, say it because okay. we're we're literally in the middle of a round of combat. Right. T tell you what. Here's here's what here's what I'll propose then, David. Um, I back you up. Whatever you decide to do. Same for, for Matt. You guys come to different decisions, start acting in different directions. I, I'll figure it out. But if if you say to yourself, you know, nope, she's a double crosser. Estelle's got to die. And you start doing that. I'll, I'll back you up. I'll put it this way. I'm not going to coup de gras the wine dark cohorts. They're just working stiffs. You know, they get paid, right? I'll We're tie them up. protect the wine darks? <laughs> no, no. I'm not protecting them. <laughs> They're just they're just working stiffs yeah, for hire, man. You, you know, I get you. I love, I love I'm a soldier. I'm not. I'm not going to yeah. cut their throats. Okay, so what's wallop is going to be tortured under long, painful circumstances? So, what do you order the goblins to do when they move forward? Get him, Ray. Killer or detainer? Can I say one last thing? Sorry, I just because I if I make this decision for us, I'm going to have to pay for this decision. <laughs> For weeks and months from not just y'all, but the entire community. Love everyone, but seriously. So you're like, right. I don't mean to put this on you, David. I, I wanna, right. I that's why I want to frame it for everyone's thinking, yeah. because I also want to frame it for the audience's thinking, full transparency. Yeah. The decision for us can't be whether we like Estelle or not. The decision for us has to be what kind of game we want to play next. And we've committed to a type of game that excludes Estelle in almost every conversation we've had for weeks. For Watch. us to go back to including Estelle and pursuing that as a new quest thread for lack of a better description even though i totally agree she has all this information and we didn't expect this to happen right we didn't expect her to be here but for us to do that diverts everything we've planned for this session and several sessions to come which to me is a quagmire quite frankly that does not mean i want to be bloodthirsty about her but like this is what i mean about like just we had a decision it's do we want the gold do we want her that's why i'm thinking that if you disagree with me i'm okay i'm i'm good to pivot but i need we like need to pivot to that is what i'm getting at in my mind go ahead I would take her prisoner oh. if it were me in your spot where you're standing. Okay, let's take I'd, her be trying to, let's I'd be trying to dogpile her entire up. Prisoner. Okay, yeah, we're doing it. We're dogpiling her entire up. Okay, so this is the way that it's going to work. Um, this is just a, sort of a test uh, mechanic that I'm going to give a whirl, which is a brute force sort of thing. The way I'm going to do it basically is it's going to be. Um, uh, it's probably not even going to be a contest, but uh, we're going to do it in a post check uh, total hit dice versus total hit dice of the two opposing forces. Okay, so um, what I want one of you guys to do is to roll me 20 D6. I'm sorry, uh, 20, 20, 20 uh, I'm sorry, 20 D8, 20 D8, and just tell me a total. Do it, Ted. Do it? There you go, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 20 D8, right? Mm -hmm. What'd you get? 98, John. <laughs> okay, now I'm not going to show this roll because it would give away what her power level is, okay? How's that for action for you, John? 
98. That's a that's a fantastic roll. <laughs> uh, uh, that's because we got all eights somehow. I don't know. No, did, did we get all eight? No. Okay. No, no, no. Um. Okay. So yeah. So they they rush forward. Um, and uh, you give them the orders to like don't kill, uh, pin her to the ground, and they rush forward, and they and she like she's picking herself up. You can see that she actually wasn't pulling up her mace; she was actually grabbing for something in a in her belt pouch. When she kind of looks up in alarm, and she she has one moment to sort of struggle and be like, "No, wait!" And then like all the goblins are just like, <laughs> and they <laughs> launch themselves on top of her. Uh, and hold on a second, I got to clear this. Um, <laughs> how does this how does it how do i get rid of this i don't know you, just get, you have a swipe wait, swipe left when they do that john is it fair to say their head is maybe the only thing emerging from this pile <laughs> 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 and and if that is the case uh can mess up, uh i can't even say my name about, about i was about to call myself uh mess up, i can't even say it Ugh. uh my lord Faust. Mustafa. No. What are you trying to say? Mephistopheles is what I was about to oh, say. Instead of, oh. instead of Mr. Face. Um, can I walk up and crouch, kind of like picking my tooth with my dagger, and then look her in the eye and say, well, you're lucky to be alive, but I would suggest you be open to conversation. He Just hasn't sort of actually told us the result of this contest yet. Oh, I thought he did. I no. was trying to get rid of dice, but yeah, that, that's, oh, that's, that's fair sorry. enough. You, it, it's it, it basically can happen. Um, they basically kind of hold her all the way down, and uh, there's a bunch of them like sitting on top of her. They're all squealing in delight and all that sort of stuff. Um, more, you kind of see this from the top down, uh, and uh, she she doesn't say a word. She just kind of glares up at you, and she goes, "You, you'll talk or you'll die." Yes. What? What? What is this all about? It's about betraying us. It's obvious. Don't act dumb. It's it, she. She acts dumb. <laughs> okay. I I, 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 poke, I poke her a little bit with just a little bit with the dagger. Just a little. No, oh, no, no, really. no, no, no. Yeah. Just Come a on. little poke. <laughs> no, I do. She's a lady. I do. Oh, villain. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you are a villain, <laughs> sir. A villain. I'm For a all villain. we've done to you, all the hospitality that we've shown to you. Hospitality. Hospitality. You hospitable spies at best, dragon maters at worst. Who could say? But we know that you would want us dead if you could. And now look where you are. Where you do you get you such a notion? Big. You thought you were tall and you are tiny. You are small and you have nothing. And if you want your life, you'll start to be kind and not so stubborn you i am you at understand. your i am at your mercy sir i have i can do nothing you are absolutely right in everything you say but i swear to you i swear on tycheus above that i wish you no ill at all what do the you treasure wish? was never yours we it was our plan with the goblin above to take our share of it would you like to know a little secret that I have that might make you feel a little uh, confused, Estelle, about the relationships you you craft and the trust you think you have? Our dear poisonous breath friend, yes, you know him, you offered him 3,000 coins for our uh, uh, lives or at best to keep us from interrupting. Yes, I know this. Why do you think I'm alive with that knowledge? I don't know. Exactly. So do you think this bond with the dragon you have is as strong as you presume? I don't know what kind of bargains that you've made with Cross and Mr. X. Mm, exactly. What do you uh, want from me? What do you plan to do with me, villain? I don't need to tell you anything. You need only follow where you are told to go. Very well. Let's get some rope, and I'll, I'll gesture back at, at everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, combat over. What do you do? Tie her up. Okay, so Dead, she is no, tied. No, she is tied up. The combat took a turn. What is? I still get right. dice. I gotta re reload the dice. <laughs> I want to tie right. up the uh, wind art cohort and Codswallop. Um. And uh, I'll throw Coswell down the hole. Uh, and the Windar cohort, I'll, you know, if I can gag them and tie them up. And then I want to go up the stairs and see if uh, there's the fifth guy who I suspect is still up there. Do you have enough? You have rope to do all this tying? 
I do not have any rope. Someone needs to give me some rope. Uh, let me you check and see. Well, I, I have one pair. Uh, Elizabeth has a pair of manacles, so oh. that'll hand, handle one guy. Yeah, I, I can just use right. their own belts and stuff like that too if I have to. Okay, yeah. so in order if you want to secure it, if you want to secure, uh, it, if you want to secure it, it's a, it's okay. You got plenty, but the uh, in order to secure everybody, we'll take another turn. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we should let's also uh, blindfold them so that we don't have. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, visual uh, witness. Pull hoods over their heads, stuff socks in their mouths, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, okay. And then I want to go up and look and see if the fifth guy is up on guard duty up at the uh, upper level. Um, okay. Are we sure that the gold's still in the stash? That's the next No, question. we are not. That's the next thing that we need to do. It may be trapped for all we know. We should be very careful. Yeah. Well, you can torture Codswall up a bit for that. <laughs> don't kill him no that's i want to do that that's all fine. right all right sorry i'm trying to figure out this dice thing it's annoying me okay so um uh, like my dice screen is like full yeah, of dice that aren't going away i don't know what's going on yeah i had to refresh a couple times i kept throwing them down all right but so I'll, I'll, I'll roll one and see if that does anything uh yeah okay so you you head up to the um there we go you head up to the uh up the stairs mort carefully slowly you know i expect someone up there Okay, yeah. So you get up there, and now you're on the level where where the gladiator cells were. Yeah. Okay. So on either side, there's like these like stables, basically where where gladiators were sort of kept, and you can see that um, some of those cells are actually open, and they have been um, uh, efficiently furnished with the rudimentary uh, necess necessities to bed overnight in a military fashion, right? Be like with you know five of them basically. Uh, seven, uh, six, I guess. Um, uh, Codswallop doesn't didn't really seem to give a shit. Um, Codswallop uh, was uh, just like a ratty old bedroll that was sort of in the middle of the floor. Um, it also looks like all of the uh, bones and um, uh, remains of Guelphs. Remember, remember, good old insane Guelph the dwarf that uh, actually fessed up. Um, yeah. And not didn't fess up, but uh, was the actual person who had given up, um, who had discovered the Druid's retreat in that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, his party, uh, his remains were here when you uh, that th those remains were there. They, those have all been cleaned up. So everything's like very military efficient here and clean. Um, right. right. Uh, but you do not see any signs of the uh, lone missing uh, wine dart mercenary. May I make right. a suggestion on what we do with cods when we're done with them? Is it soup or consomme of some I, sort? I think, I think we, I think, I think we, I think we gag him. I think we tie his hands, leave his feet untied. I think we strap a bag of about a hundred solidi to him, and we send him running with the torch wedged through the plains for for Cross to find. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's a message to both of them. Cross will know. Well, I I, I like it. I I see. I, I'm reluctant to to do anything that makes it obvious we've been involved with it and Cross can bring it back to us. I mean, he's going to figure it out because he's very, very smart, but sure. um, some direct, yeah, direct proof. Yeah. yeah, direct proof is hard to argue with later. Like, we might be able to bullshit our way a little bit later, maybe. I don't know. He's, so he's you, know, you know that there was that opening too. that sort of, uh, that was like a, a wide staircase that sort of led out from the outside where you fought those lizards. Arena. Right, and they, remember mm -hmm. the pit itself, the arena, the training arena itself was overgrown yeah. with trees and stuff like that. Um, so you that's can where, see that sprawling out before you. Um, and um, uh, by the that's way, that's where gladiator, I'm actually thinking the sentry would probably be. The gladiator cells are lit with torchlight, and um, but there is no torchlight coming from outside, so that is still dark. There is some starlight though that is illuminating out there. Um, and uh, did you gag Estelle? I mean, not initially because we wanted to talk to her. So no, not yet. I don't think. I mean, she can she cast uh, on her I, hands? I, yeah, I think we would. I mean, Avaricios knows what is necessary to cast spell, so we would remove her holy symbol and um, just make it so that she can't cause trouble. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what now? What do you do? So if I don't spot a sentry outside, I'll go back downstairs and um, go check the vault. Did he see any horses or anything like that? Do you go outside? Um, I was thinking, well, uh, yeah, let's say that I, what I was thinking was I go up to the, the ramp you said that goes to up to the arena mm -hmm. 
and I was going to go and I'm looking for a sentry. I expect there to be someone out there. So I'm just so, um, yeah. if I can, I am visible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, when he when Avrisio sees him like exit the top of the stairwell, Avrisio will go blind again and uh, have you go okay. be invisible. All right. Okay. Cool. So you creep up there uh, more out into the darkness, and yes, you do yeah. see that outside there is um, uh, familiar creatures. So you see, well, it's, it's just one. Um, there is the the small wagon. There uh -huh. is no more deer carcasses in there. There's a little bit of blood. Uh -huh. In the in the uh -huh. basement, there is also no longer that uh, other that first um, large lumpy sack that was put in there as well. That is also gone, um, and so mm -hmm. the wagon is there. Um, it has been unhitched from the mule, which has basically been tied loosely, and that is just sort of gazes at you stupidly in the dark. Right, but no sentry. No, uh, you do not see a sentry on the level that oh. you are at. The um, shadow of the um, huge pediment, the the school. Sort of um, looms, uh, you know, casts a shadow in the moon. Um, the the moon shadow, uh, not the moon. Mm -hmm. shadow, you know what I mean. The moon is casting a shadow of right. the school over you in the dark. All right, I want to disturb a... nothing oh. and just retreat back down into the gladiator level. Okay, another turn take... passes. At this point, yeah, I just want to let you know that you are at the minimum time when sleep may expire. Okay, so my guys are tied up. Codswallop's tied up. I'm going to go and to the we vault. don't want to kill them. I don't want to kill them. If, if I come back and find them dead, I can't stop you. But like, I just Mort doesn't feel right about killing soldiers that are tied up and bag bound and gagged. Mm -hmm. So the so goblins are basically all answer. surrounding like the sleeping forms and they're just kind of looking. Um, uh, they're, they're looking at you guys for any sort of like that. You could tell they're like, they're ready. Like the moment you give them the word, like it shivs uh, in the yeah. next. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put it this way. If we don't kill them, what are we doing with them? If we leave them here, where are they telling people we went? And how easily will that bite us in the ass later? Like, we have to actually protect our our, our, our flank here. Yeah, and if you're we right. we don't want to kill anyone or make any decisions that are, that are hard, we're going to die. I just don't think we survive. You're right. Time. You're right. We can't kill them here, though. They have to be down in the tunnels. We don't want to leave blood behind or bodies or anything. They have to vanish. I agree. Or we send them out for cross to eat. As, a, as We put them all in a wagon. We put we put Codswallop backwards on the mule, blindfolded and gagged, and put a pile of five hundred solidi as an offering to cross and to insult, and send them all off to die. Not that we that has to be done, but it'd be very comedic. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, point is, it'll get a lot of attention. It'll draw him over, and he will be furious with them. But he will get something from us. He knows that he's not getting it if he doesn't get it. So he knows it's our fault to begin with, right? Remember too that um, he's he's looking to make uh, what he cares about is the main contingent bringing up the the vast amount. He doesn't really give a shit about this little vanguard. He may not even like the moment that he was done talking to them. No he may have completely they, yeah. forgot about him. You don't know, yeah. which, yeah. which which I which I totally get. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess then the question is, if we flag this early, would cross intercede with the wine dark and say you didn't get my shit, die or go find them? Right. So maybe we don't. Do anything. We take him down, like you said, yeah. secretly with us, and just let him find out in the morning. Matt, yeah, I, I, I think, I think these guys gotta die, man. I think, oh. I think they gotta die. Okay, so because we're... You know because they'll, right. they'll, yeah, right. they'll know where we went. Uh, right. I'll, a, I'll a, do it. It's a tough one. I'll do it. John, one other thought. Sorry, one other thought. I'll, I'm, I'm sorry. It on sorry. Myself. Ted, one other thought before we do it. Though, yeah. It just occurred to me, so I interrupt you. Do you want to try to coerce them to help carry the gold for their lives and then give us more arms for this stash? No. Okay. No. Oh. No. Oh. All right. Gang oh. green. Yeah, boy. I hate to do it. These men are good soldiers, but our lives are at risk if they live. You know what to do. Oh. Not here. Down in the tunnels. Go ahead, boys. We don't hate to do it. We'll, we'll do it right quick. No problem at all. Thank you. Boys. Yeah, do it. It's do all it in clean. time. All right. And they're clean. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they all just like, uh, they raise up the bodies and drag them down the hole. And like, they just, um, like the goblins go and Codswell, the bodies yeah. just like disappear down the hole. It's like a, like a drain, right? Perfect. Like just things like, yeah. like nasty <laughs> things going down a drain. Just, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and they are including, <laughs> including Codswallop. Uh, I think we should Codswallop. make, I think we should force yeah, Codswallop. To talk to him first. I, that, you're talking at the same think... time. I don't know. Hold on. Who, what? Sorry, sorry. Okay. David, hold on. 
the goblins are not to kill Codswap. He's to remain a prisoner for now. I have to personally torture him within an inch of his life first. Okay, so you they 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 drip down the hole without Codswallop, and then um you uh you just hear like cries of glee kind of dissipate away, um and then there's uh silence, right? And then you see Gang Green sort of pop his head up again, right? And he's got like his big snaggle tooth, and he's got a big green on his face, and he's like, <laughs> "Jump, dumb boat!" <laughs> uh, Gang Green, <laughs> their weapons and armor are yours if you want it. Oh, nice. right, that's that's fantastic. They got some nice stuff on them. Nice yeah. shiny straight blades. I like the straight blades. All right. One more suggestion, Ted, before you kill Cods. If we're oh, worried about this, later. well, okay. Well, if we're worried about him or, or the stash being trapped, for instance, we could make him be the one that opens it. Exactly. That yes. was what I was thinking. Yes. Well, might, might I suggest, boss, that we take a quick break before we decide what to do next? <laughs> there you go. Green, green. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just have a conference reunion. I love it. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Bladder's empty, beers full once again. Okay. Um, so the. Uh, the end result of this is a, another turn has passed during the um, the goblin nefarious deeds in the dark. Um, uh, oh. it's, so the we are now um, at 6 a.m. in the morning. The okay. very first signs of possible light uh, are sh okay. are shining in the east. The um, although you're not really aware of it to to, to your because the because the stairway basically leads west, you probably wouldn't even be aware of it. Um, the only two remaining people here um besides your party is estelle and codswallop uh codswallop right. is asleep and bound and gagged but um you have no knowledge of when he will wake up estelle is bound completely can still talk um do you divest her of all of her gear yes absolutely Probably should okay so she has a uh she has a beautiful flanged mace chased with um i don't know bronze or something like that it's 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 qu quite beautiful it looks like it's probably magical there is that uh, the most striking thing she has on here is that slim alabaster staff that has an open hand on top um avaricio so when you take a look at that kind of knowing um the different religions of uh the empire you notice that this is a representation of of a thorkin goddess actually not a not, not an arcantian goddess um it's the thorkin goddess of healing known as mishpral which are or the symbol is an open hand now you know for a fact because you took the holy symbol off of her and have seen it before that um she is a, a cleric of uh, of tycheus which is the arcantian god of of uh, good luck and trickery and things like that um so she had some uh, like a strange gods uh, she wasn't really paying much attention um, in addition, yeah, she, she had, uh, two potions in that belt pouch that she was reaching for. That's what it was. Okay. I was wondering what she was reaching for. Cool. Okay. And she also has a purse with some loose coins. Uh, if you care, um, it's 36 copper, 25 silver and 78 gold. And uh, I forget that. Okay. So that's what she, and she's also wearing chain mail and has a shield. The shield is nice, but doesn't appear to be magical in nature. Right. Uh, and she has a gold uh, so holy John, symbol just of Tychus. Okay. Um, just for our uh, clear thinking, um, you say it's a, what time is it now? And what was, what was our estimate about when the wine dark might start showing it's up? It's 6 a.m. The cohort is scheduled to arrive at 9 a.m. You have three hours left. And you do okay. not know when, okay. when uh, Codswallop is going to wake up. Is there anything? I'm trying not to really belabor this. Is there any way we could frame Codswallop for Estelle and disappear with both of them no. that no. you can think of? Okay. No, I, I really think the, the best scenario here is the rest of the wine dark shows up and there's no trace of what happened. Okay, cool. All right. Um, get to so it. what I want Mort to do is... Myster mysteries gonna, happen. Yeah. yeah he's going to pick up Mort, or sorry, uh, Codswallop by his, you know, front of his shirt, drag him over to the vault and uh, try slapping him awake, see if I can get the spell to end early or something. <laughs> Uh, you can, yeah. Uh, you can you can slap him awake. Yeah, I'll slap him awake. Uh, when he wakes up, he should find my beady eyes right in his, with the pin right up under his throat, and uh, uh, visible anger on Mort's face. Are you uh, down in the um, basement or in no, the uh, I'm vault. Yeah, I'm in the in the basement, right over by the secret hidden door. Is everyone else door. down there too? I don't know what they want to do. They can do whatever they want. That's cool. 
Doesn't matter to me. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, um, I'll be. I'll be. Uh, I'll be yeah, I we, guess, we should. Vault area. Okay, so everyone's down in that room. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> called Zwollop. I'm terribly disappointed in you. I placed great faith in you, my son. You were my own chosen, my chosen follower, and you have chosen to betray me in the worst possible fashion, and that is financially. <laughs> like, we call it a white collar crime. <laughs> I, I cannot express my disappointment and indeed my nearly overpowering urge to gut you like a fish and display your organs to the gods. So what he's, say you? He's like got his chin up. You know what I mean? Like, and his eyes are like wide. He's sort of looking at you, and he's attempting to in his in his bindings. Like, he kind of makes an effort to sort of shrug a little bit. He's like. Listen, boss, it was a lot of money. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yes, indeed. A great deal of money to which you would have been entitled to fair share. Yeah, and but that fair I share just... wasn't going to be what I was about to haul out of here. Let's face it, huh? Oh, my child. <laughs> you really think the Wyandotte cohort or Estelle or anyone else was going to let you, a smelly, Filthy, hunched back, wretched, disgusting goblin walk off with a single coin? No, no, my friend. You needed me for that, and I'm going to walk off with all the coins. Yeah, well, I can't say that you don't have me in a bit of a predicament, boss, but listen, <laughs> other than this, <laughs> I could still do a lot for you. I got friends in high places now. I think I like him more than right. Mort. Sorry, Mort. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Goswala. In in recognition of our many days of faithful service that you gave me, I will listen to your proposition. I'm just saying, boss, that I was I've never had any problem with you as an employer. You 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 walked me right into this vault. I gotta thank you for that. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I still no. think that I would be a valuable member of your party. Be happy no. to just take the normal share from that one. Promise. <laughs> swear to any gods you want that I won't. <laughs> I love this guy so much. <laughs> I won't. Oh, the balls in this goblet. No, no more so betrayals. I, uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned friends in high places, young Codswallop. Oh, uh, yeah. Name them. <laughs> Well, I know Divide Kronos and Estelle; they're really good with me now, and uh, and oh, I've even uh, I've even uh, talked to uh, talked to the dragon once or twice. Once, yes, I didn't really yes. talk to him actually. That was Estelle, but no. I saw the dragon. Yes, yes. <laughs> Codswallop, nothing you say to me has made me change my mind in the least bit. You've got one more chance to make me change my mind. Here's what I want to do: I want you to open the vault for me. Can you remember how to do that? Oh, of course, boss. All right. Let's go. I'll hoist him to his feet, and I'll push him up to the the uh, um, vault, yep. the, right up to where the, the door is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to get a good grip on him, right? Yep, yep. I summon a couple of goblins over to kind of back me up, cut his bonds. Okay. Open it on up. Okay. Go on, Cobb. Open he the vault. It's your thing, and he, he does so. And uh, the, the, the piece slides away, you know, seamlessly, and uh, looks untouched, right? It, it, it's just a, like a mound, like a massive mound of Solidai. And it even even as focused as you are more on, on your anger on cause wallop, even your breath catches like in your throat when you see it again. You're like, oh, my God, <laughs> that's, that's so much money. <laughs> Yeah, here's but, what I'm going to do, Codswallow. It's like the, the trunk, the trunk in the back of the car in uh, Repo Man. Repo yeah, Man, exactly. Yeah. Or a Pulp Fiction so oh. suitcase, right? Yeah. Here's what, yeah. Here's what I'm going to do for you, Codswallow. I'm going to give you a gift. The last thing you see on Earth will be this gold. <laughs> and then uh, I it. Oh, Mort, that was Ooh. cold. <laughs> He was, he was just going to break out his last argument of, like, we're goblins, man. <laughs> it's a goblin to goblin. Uh, but no, you do not give him the time. Um, he, he lets out a, uh, a gurgle, right? Um, his, his, because you let him loose, his, his hands go to his throat, and it's just like blood pours out. And he collapses on top of the gold, spreading blood all over your ill-gotten gold. 
<laughs> Blood oh, is doomed. <laughs> you sure you don't want to put his body in here after we take the gold out and just leave it there? <laughs> Oof. Um, you see That'd Estelle, like, she, she, like here's, turns, here's, she turns her head away, like she can't watch. And now you can see that she starts thing, to actually... Guys, like, she we, actually yeah. uh, sorry, she actually starts to tremble a little bit as she uh, has seen two uh, separate incidents now of what you guys are capable of. Can I look her in the eye when she turns around? Oh, we are and such catch it? nice guys. Yeah, absolutely. She does. <laughs> just, she, sort, uh, just sort of just sort of pick my tooth a little bit with that dagger and smile. It's a mixture of uh, anger and um, and uh, fear for her own life. I will, uh, you know, wipe. How my do those blade old off. wizards taste? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wipe my blade off. I'm not to say, I've really. I really hated to do that. I quite liked good Codswallop. He was very good until he double-crossed me. There's no worse thing. Wouldn't you say, boys? Don't you think so, all you goblins? You agree, don't you? So when you turn around after making that little speech, Mort, and you turn around and you see all the goblins arrayed before you, you see they're all, like, gazing up at you with their jaws open, including Gangrene, and they all pull out their, like, little shitty little blades, and they all, like, as a unit, like salute you like they all like raise their blades to their foreheads yes yes, <laughs> yes. and then they kind of they they bow they, they they nod their heads towards you and sort of uh bring their blades and sort of present them towards you in like a uh, a gesture which you have never seen before in, in, in as far as imperial goblin hood right so i will uh um i'll look at avaricious and uh uh face here and i'll kind of head over to, like point to the gold and then i'm going to go over and i have to give the the legionnaires uh you know handshake and kiss and whatever it is we do you know as legionnaires to welcome them to my brotherhood each and every one of those goblins gets the the uh you know the the handshake and a kiss on each cheek and okay bonding us together they look like they are particularly little bits like they're they are uh uh they're stunned by what you've done um, but uh, like very, very approving of it, you know, like they're like, they're just like, oh my God, like you're the epitome of, of what a goblin should be and what you just did. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and at the very I'm end, the last, argue with. The, the last part, the last person that you shake hands with is Gan Green and he, he looks, he locks eyes with you straight on, on with you. And he kind of grasps both of your shoulders and he says, you must see the king. And he I says it like very, he says it like very seriously. The, I think you're right. The time has come. The time has come, but first, a gift gold. for the king. Yes, a gift for the king. Yeah. Yeah. For the king. Yes, yes. So, Matt, I believe you worked up how much everyone has to carry, and we can actually move all of this, right? <laughs> okay, okay. For, let me start real quick. Um, let me just give the brief overview uh, for uh, you guys already know, but for the audience as well. Uh, what we are talking about here is ancient gold solidi. So these are the ancient Archontian colds that are gold pieces that are worth 10 times as much as a regular gold piece and also weigh 10 times as much. So the purposes of the way that we're using encumbrance, which is slots, it works out like this. There are 6,161 solidi in that vault, which means that there is a potential value in, gold, in regular modern day GP of 61,610. That is an, a massive amount of gold. Uh, of gold piece value. That is also the same number potential of experience points that could be divvied up by anyone who brings that into a haven. And remember too that um, it is the specific PCs and retainers who bring that back to a haven that does not get divvied amongst uh, the entire AV club. So that's a potential 61,610 XP that could, could get divided up. Um, the for if you are banished, if, if you want to take it all, if you have the means to take it all, you're talking about needing 616 encumbrance slots in order to haul it out. Okay. 10 solid eye equals one slot. Laryl's sack, if it's empty and is not carrying anything in its capacity as a bag of holding, has a capacity of 50 slots, which means it could hold 500 solid eye. That is also the exact same amount that floating disc, which is the spell that Mizoface has memorized, can also hold. So before there's any like actual hauling of weight by the goblins and you and sacks and backpacks and all that sort of stuff, you could actually carry um, 100 slots worth or 1,000 solidi, which is a, roughly about a sixth of the total vault treasure, purely magically. Now, the cool thing about the sack is that the sack um, is in, like can just be carried around forever. 
the disc actually has a um, duration, which I believe is six turns. Is that correct, uh, David? Uh, I believe so. That's what, we, so that's what we looked up, yeah. Yeah. Also okay. banking on Isocritus's ring being a floating disc ring, which we will test at some point. Yeah, so if you're just going with the cast spell, that's six turns. And if you're staying within the tunnels, it's not necessarily a, a thing that you have to do, but um, if you're, and uh, assuming that you are laded down, uh, dropping you down to 90, you're moving two squares per turn. So that would only get you three squares away from where you are right now. I mean, what am I so saying? Not I'm sorry. even uh, to the uh, end of the narrow tunnel. Six it turns. Get us, uh, it, uh, it won't get us to the, that where we're that twelve tunnel really curves. So we it, won't get to the curve. It would get to you. Would get you twelve squares. I'm sorry, twelve squares. John, may I inspect the ring for an inscription of any sort? Isocritus's ring. That is uh, there is no on inscription on that ring. Um, give me a second. I will find it. I actually. I do remember the actual finger, room where though. that was found, so I can actually find that one pretty quick. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on. Needless okay, so say. it's um, it's a gaudy silver ring, and it features an oversized one inch diameter silver disc that rests against the knuckle. Okay, You're like it's so it's like a like a. You know what I mean? Like it's like way oversized. It's like a big old bling sort of thing on on top. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't not look fashionable. Gotcha. Gotcha. But we did determine so, it was magical. <laughs> yes. So Matt, you do you did determine I, the number of available slots, right? Correct. Okay. So including the uh, so I have uh, kind of two different piles, right? It's like John already okay. mentioned the um, uh, Laryl Sack. Uh, uh, value that it could hold but i have two different piles right so if we if we focus on the sacks that we brought and laryl sack look, these are things that will not expire um uh, we have a total there of uh, uh, 1340 solidi right that's um three sacks with uh 11th strength goblins carrying them that's with laryl sack filled and then we can add with the discs 500 solidi on top of that. So we're looking at a total, um, and this is keeping us at uh, 90, right? We're looking at uh, uh, 1,840 solidi's max. Um, I don't know how much uh, we can fit into that chest. That's a that's a new thing that we're adding in. Sorry, yes. I'm I'm a little confused. You said sacks and Laryl sack, but you're not counting backpacks or yes. what? Uh, that was uh, no, because I don't think I didn't have uh, I don't have slots for their backpacks. If they if they all have backpacks, I don't know. Uh, I do have a capacity for the chest now. I looked it up. Um, if the chest is empty, okay. completely empty, it can hold. Uh, uh, it can hold 300 coins, so uh, 300 normal coins. So that means it would have um, um, 30 slots. 30, 30? 30 slots, yeah. So it could, um, that means it could hold, uh, uh, what did I say? 10 soul dies. 30. Yeah. 30 soul die. 30 soul die. Yeah. So. But but backing up, Matt, I mean, I know you don't know that what the goblins have backpacks or not, but like, you know, Yost has a backpack. Mort has a backpack. Were you counting those with your 1,340? Yeah, that was the total value that uh, when I asked everybody is like max value with your characters, with my characters, everybody loaded up to the max 1340 sold day. So 10 solidi to a slot, right? 18, eight, eight. Yes. Yeah, 18 if we uh, do the uh, the 500 additional on this on the disc. And that was which, a 90 which movement? I think is, yeah, that keeps us at 90. And I think that that's actually good because it still gives the wine dark enough because remember, Kroz and those guys, they don't know how much is in there. So it still gives them to, some to take out of here and then, you know, get eaten and, uh, you know, more than some. We didn't, we didn't even get half. Not so mad. If there's 6,000 Solidi, <clears throat> we haven't even accounted for half of it. 
Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, we can carry. Already. We can carry, man. Yeah. We, um, it was always uh, the assumption that you're going to take what you could, but not take everything, right? So, right. Uh, so are you accounting for the goblins' uh, capacities too in that number, uh, Matt? No, because we don't know what they can um, carry. Yeah. Well, if if they, I don't know if they each have a have a um, a backpack. They have a backpack. I do not know about so, that. So, so with strength eleven, how many slots does that give them before they, they dropped? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve slots. So Be, that keeps them at ninety. At ninety. 12 so 12 times mm -hmm. 20 is um 240 240 slots so that's 24 more solid eye right am i wrong no that's that's 2000 solid eye i'm sorry yeah yeah i'm sorry yeah duh 240 slots times 10 is 2400 solid eye okay so add 2400 solid eye to your original number uh matt and what do we get uh okay 2000 uh, 2,400. Oh, let's see, that's math. Here we go. I got a calculator. 2,400 in goblin backpacks plus, what did we say, 1840? Mm-hmm. 4240. Uh, that is a grand total of 4,240. Okay, so that's 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 your final number if you want to stay at 90. Or is everyone cool with that? Question. Uh, and that's not counting the disc. Is that right, Matt? Let, uh, David, what were you going to say? You were going to say something. That is including 500... 500 on the disc. Yeah. Oh, David. So your original number of 1340 included Laryl sack, but not the disc. Correct. But not the disc. Okay. Sorry, David. Yeah, go ahead. I have a spell called dispel exhaustion on a scroll that gives me 50% of my health and says in my very brief description, which was not in the long form that we have on uh, uh, Miro, which was just the, uh, the, the aggressive ones. What I wrote jotted down was, can move but not attack 2x during duration. Does that mean like a haste spell, like double my movement speed 2x? Is that, you'd have to look it up. I, I, I have like my notes from our, our attack on FX, not the full description. If that is the case, and it, uh, I don't know who it affects, if it's one person or many, but if it would affect floating disc, for instance, if I could double my speed with floating disc and just sprint ahead, I don't know. That helps. Five hundred solid eye. Uh, We're letting you out of our sight. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never see uh, you again. <laughs> I just want to have a sense of what that spell does. Um, in case it does have a group wide movement effect, it would be very helpful in a situation like this. Uh, okay, I thought, we're, we're going to have to take a break. Hold on, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Sure. Okay. Uh, use the old. Wizard spell companion for second edition. Dispel exhaustion, um, unfortunately, is a uh, illusion spell. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, once, again, once again, once okay. um, no again, it, it, it would have um, given you a move as if hasted, though, for quite a long time, cool. actually. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Good to know. Yeah. All right. So we, if we take uh, four thousand, David, would, would you like us to kill you real quick, and you can come back as an as an illusion? Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> 4,240 Solidi. Everybody gets loaded up. We clean up Codswallop's body and the blood and lock the vault back up. Or do we want to actually put his body inside the vault? No, I don't think we do. We want to just vanish this whole thing. No blood, no body. Clean it all up. Maybe the we thing. leave the vault just slightly open. Where does the, where does the body go? Down no, the tunnel. Yeah. Okay. Wherever is there any the, reason... Is there any reason we shouldn't, or is there any way that we could, perhaps is the way of phrasing it, take the remaining solid eye out of the vault, shove it into the pit, and then collapse the entrance to the pit from this side? Why wouldn't we do that? So and the um, later. <clears throat> so the uh, uh, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, you would have to work at collapsing, right? It's already collapsed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but we have like a, we were in a ruin, right? So we could get large rubble and essentially like maybe like do something to I don't know. We do it. Right? Just basically what you're saying is we can't carry it all with us, but we could take some of it, put it in the tunnel and collapse the tunnel behind us. Yes. It my my goal is rather than leaving it in the vault, put everything down in the tunnel cuz we know where it is and then dead end. You so could do it. It, just, it would it would take time, that's all. That's all I'm yeah, it depends maybe, on how long it takes us to yeah. load everything up and clean up the blood and bodies. Okay, so this is what I'm going to say. If you don't collapse the tunnel, 
right? And you don't remove the rest of the treasure. If you just take what you can, I'm going to say that it's going to take four turns for the loading to, to, to happen. Okay. If you want to, in addition, um, collapse it and move all the rest of it in, I'm going to say that it's going to, um, take an additional, uh, six turns for a total of 10 turns. Which is before the wine darker. It's still before, arrive, but it's, it's going to put you really, I think it's, I think it's worth it. It, it, it's, it, it doesn't. See, here's, here's the thing, though. If the, Two, three, go ahead, four, John. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yeah, it still puts you a little bit more than an hour in front of the wind art cohort. And it blocks it blocks them pursuing us. At least from this direction. I mean. All right. Although, remember part of our plan was they leave with some cash and Kraz eats them. That wasn't ever part of our plan. What? It was part of our plan. <laughs> Because if Cross, no, that was part of the plan. If Cross expects gold to come out, and gold comes out, then he's like, "Ah, those those AV boys didn't didn't steal my gold." And I get he gets to eat the wine dark, and he gets to take some gold. Yeah, the idea is if that, no that Cross comes doesn't... out. What, John? I was going to say that the idea was is that Cross um, doesn't have any real knowledge of the number, like what right. is supposed to be down there. Yeah, but if gold comes it, out, it could, but yeah, it happy. could potentially, yeah. Yeah, it could, could no, potentially take some some heat off of us, maybe yeah. to give some deniability at the, yeah. in the future. The other thing that I'll I'll point out is that just logistically, this would mean coming back like you know all this way again. It's another one of you know another one of these sessions where we come all the way back through these tunnels to get to the stuff that's just right on the other side of that. Yeah. You, you could split yes. the difference. You could put some down in the hole, collapse it, and then leave some up here if you want. Okay, just just a throw. I, I don't want to. Uh, should we take a break? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to torture us. We have ten minutes. So running through things as fast as I can. We decided not to give the rod back. Not giving the rod back means we are not going to the plateau. It means we are not doing anything up here to retrieve this gold from sunlight. All right. If we are not getting all of the gold from Cross, it does not matter if we get some of it and we cover our asses because we are not bringing the good golden rod back. In which case, we are kill on sight by Cross, no matter what we do. Which means if we are not giving him the rod, we might as well get all of the gold, which is what we talked about on Discord. We're now saying we're going to do half of each again. At which point, we need to give him the rod back. If we're doing anything to repair our relationship with Cross, we have to give him the rod now. Which means we're going back to the plan that we didn't vote on, which is okay. But that is, that's what I'm saying. We, we got to like do the thing, yeah. right? Like in which case, if we're doing the thing, let's do the thing. And so throwing it in the, throwing it in the tunnel and blocking behind us. I mean, we don't have to, we can leave it here, but I just don't want the reason we leave it here to be that we perceive a, a saving face with Cross as an option. Because the minute we do that, we're getting nothing out of it. He's still, he's still going to kill us, right? So what you're saying is we shouldn't half-ass two things. We should whole-ass one thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we voted on that. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. And now okay. we're doing okay. the opposite okay. vote. <laughs> no, I think David. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I hate to say this again in this session, but I think David might be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I do not. I do not hesitate in agreeing with that uh, at all. Um, I will. I will uh, want to do one thing while sure. all of this is going on. Um, Avarice just wants to, because um, uh, I don't know the, the the range of the alarm spell, so he would go up as far as he needs to mm -hmm. to cast the alarm spell just so that he will hear it. It'll be a silent alarm to the um, the entrance of the um, uh, the cat not the catacombs, but the uh, the uh, the areas where, the, where that the soldiers had just cleaned up. The gladiator cells. The yeah. cells, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. So the entrance to that hall. As soon as somebody comes into the entrance of that hall, um, and he would do this fairly early on. Um, as soon as we had all our, all our stuff packed up, mm -hmm. and we were starting to to hide the to just you know shovel the gold into the tunnel, mm -hmm. he'll set that alarm there. So we'll have some warning just in case they show up early. Okay. And then, um, how are you leaving the vault it. hole itself? I say we close it. I think, I think we should close it. If close it. So make it look like it was oh, never yeah. messed with. Yep. Okay. Maybe yeah. leave one coin inside, or is that too cheeky? Well, we don't know that they know how to eat where it even is without Codswallop. Right. And we've taken every person here yeah. out. 
and yeah. Kronos. If Kronos never left, Kronos doesn't know. And do the, the rest of the wine dark right. know? Or were they thinking gods would know? So we close it up and we erase the trace and we block and we close in this tunnel. They don't even really necessarily know that we closed that tunnel either. Right. right? I mean, they might right. figure it out, you know, but like. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. So that that's fine. Um, so what I'm going to say is. I just, I just. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, I, I have one thing, John, I want to do. I want to put in there. A single piece of paper, the big red W on it. Oh fuck yes, yes. <laughs> That's very fun. That's very fun. Yes. That's very Holy fun. Shit. The wind, the wind was here. Oh. I love that. I love that. Can I add one more thing to it? it in in the vault. In your leap, but you're sealing yeah. the vault so it cannot be found, right? We yes. found it. Someone can find it. Okay. Um, yeah. One more oh, thing. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Do I think it probably serves us, given we're leaving no trace, to when we get the collapsing going, because we have time, have someone stir up the cart and the horse and send it on its way by itself. So there's no horses or any of them left here. There's no sign of them. Right. Right. They're just gone. They're not, in other words, if their stuff is all here, as Those if they never guys left, took it. they stole it. Exactly. The implication yeah. between yeah. the wine darks is now that they have taken it. Which stirs up more shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so yeah, you can, you can scare them away. That's fine. Do you, now uh, I'll I'll give you one more um, uh, a, a temptation, I guess, um, uh, with sure. time. <laughs> I, will, I will say that it will take it will take another three turns if you. Well, no, actually, I think it would probably take longer. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it an hour, which which still puts you ahead of the rival, but it puts you pretty darn close um, in order to make it so that this room, the vault room. Um, like there's no signs, like there's no blood. There's no signs of anything happening here. Um, uh, you know, replacing the, the lattice thing or re- retying it up, getting it. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like nothing ever occurred here. Like no one ever showed up. If, if we can do that and collapse the tunnel. So that, like if they lift the lattice up and look down, it looks the same, but the tunnels collapsed further down is what you're saying. Yeah, or or if you actually want to make it seem like like they never showed up, there would be no lattice thing there at all. That's what I was gonna say. I wouldn't I wouldn't have the lattice thing there if we're class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Take the lattice thing. Yeah. So I would spend the hour yeah. XR to do it and just do it, baby. Like let's commit. Let's take. Let's ride by the seat of yeah. our pants. Let's let's Roanoke it. Island this situation, right? That's that was the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's fully Roanoke it. Okay. I love it. So. You do that now. So this is basically like really detailed work. So you're basically uh, recreating the way that the vault looked bef- when you first got there, but you're also collapsing it. But no one ever knew it was collapsed in the first uh, yeah. collapse or not in the first place. And then in addition, up in the gladiator cells, you're going to dirty it up. Like you're not going to make yeah. it look like they encamp there, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then you scare off the wagon. Right, and right, right. Now that takes time. Now and now you got and the goblins will help you and everything. And they're everyone's loaded down, so everyone's moving a little bit slower. But it's like jingle jangle. Got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the disc is not in use. Is that correct? We'll we'll have to fire the disc up once we're we done. We do that last. Time. Yeah, I think what we yeah. do last because yeah. we're literally shoving. I mean. <laughs> Realistically speaking, we probably just took it and just shoved all of the solidi into the pit at first, right? Like, yeah. and then you what we can carry the from there. Okay. Yeah. You fill up a sack, you go over to the hole, you pour out the sack. But, but importantly, what we can't carry, we're leaving on the other side of the rubble in that tunnel. Does right. that make sense, John? Yeah. Like, it's on our side yeah. of the rubble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or so whatever. you guys are escaping back through the tunnels. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. We're escaping through the tunnels, but we're putting every bit of solidi we can't carry in the tunnel not on the the vault side does that make sense so if we were to come back we would be able to retrieve it yeah potentially yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. i was some some reason i was under the impression that you were going to leave from the surface all right so um so you clapped everything behind you um i will say effect for the end of the session at the at the very end um uh when you're uh collapsing the tunnel behind you as like the last part of it Right as like the as darkness sort of covers over you, and you are um, Avarius pulls out his uh, holy symbol again to to start dungeon deling again. You can hear a, a male voice go, "Hey!" Uh, from up top. Does his alarm go off? Did my alarm go off? Oh yeah, the alarm. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say we'll leave it there. The alarm goes off. You hear the alarm go off uh, up at the top. All right. Okay. But it's just just in my head, so it's. it's Avery's was like, it's time to go. There's a guy. Okay. So there's and don't forget, we yeah, stirred up enough, all the enough. horses and carts, John. Don't forget. Huh? I think it was just one huh? mule. But well, we stirred up the mule and made it yeah. run. Don't forget. A mule That's and part a of cart, the cover yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'm just saying you didn't. Uh, it, 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 there was still one missing wine dart mercenary yeah. that was never accounted for. Oh, he was up somewhere. I knew it. Fuck. I should have gone hunting him, but this worked out. This okay. Worked out. So uh, we're going to end it there. So it is when you <laughs> when you so move back trouble. down in. It is um, <laughs> it is eight eight forty in the morning. Oh. So if the wine dart cohort is has met no problems on the way over never a sure thing as you guys are well aware um all those oxen all those men those huge carts right are are um are outside the city now and are approaching the gladiatorial school right they like if you were up on top of the school you could probably see them in the distance head, heading heading west but uh but you are not out there you are now underground and you are loaded for bear with 4240 um and last thing i need to clarify is that 4240 is that with the disc operating i'm not sure yes. i calculated okay yes yes so i would have pinged it the minute we, yes. we started okay. moving. so we have to be aware that um what is it 500 solidi is at risk of being left behind if you can't find a safe place to deposit when that disc runs out right right okay so i'm going to need to mark right. the duration of the disc at this point because you fire it up the moment that the place collapses right one two three Correct. four five yeah. six load it up and start walking disc okay Cool. So you're moving at 90, so you're going to be moving at two squares per turn next session. Okay. Right. Cool. All right. That'll do it. Wow. wow. We Woo. have resolved, well, partially Woo. resolved the vault stash. You have the money. You have the money in hand. Um, so we have a, a potential of, if you can get it all to a safe haven, 42,400 XP and that amount in gold value as well. So uh, tremendous job. That was uh, amazing. You got uh, more than I thought that you would be able to get from that vault. I thought that zero might have very well been an option. <laughs> yeah, it um, seemed like it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, killer work. Mike is going to be super spell, happy. That sleep spell, man. Uh, that so sleep spell. You can all sleep well now knowing that Mike is going to be thrilled when he gets to this point. <laughs> So. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. I love you, Mike. <laughs> All right. So that was great. Uh, you've been watching 3D6 down the line. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Do not forget that you can join our free Discord server where we hash all this out every single week with a great group of folks. And uh, if you're interested to get into some of our premium channels on the server where you can talk directly to us and where we'll respond a lot more, hook up with a Patreon over there and uh, uh, join the what is it, the Delver or Conqueror tier. And of course, we can't do this without our highest level tier people, those being the Conquerors. So take it away, Matt, with who our Conquerors are. Um, yes, so um, uh, uh, yeah, we, we cannot thank you enough. It, it means so much to us, just your support. Um, and I'll uh, go through the list now. Uh, G Tokyo Time, Matt Koenig, Terry Barney, Eric Lawson, Mando NZ, Faisal, James Doig, Doig uh, Robert Valdez, Grunt, Andrew, Sh Andrew Schroker, M.M., Michael Schilling, Stefano Di Maiolo, Underwires, Matt Young, Summon Toast, Adam the DM, Jib Cutter, Scott Yearsley, Mechjack, Kick Maniac, and Dire Grew. Thank you so, so much. Indeed. Thank you to all of our Patreons for continuing to support us. Keeps us going. Um, and until next time, everyone, have a great week. Bye now. Thanks, Sean.